Okay, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the November 29th, 2022 meeting of the Hatfield Select Board. Um, just so townspeople know, we're returning. We had a, an executive session um, that we started at five o'clock and we're just returning from that. So we're getting into the regular portion of the meeting. Um, I'm going to start with announcements. We actually have quite a few announcements um, tonight. Um, First, um, good news, the Com Community Preservation Coalition um, has notified the town that they will be matching our CPA funding at a 100% level yes. for the coming year. Um, yes, I just got right this. at the top so, of the second page. Okay, so, so this year's match from the state would be $185,461, which mm. is... Really good news. Mm -hmm. yes. Fantastic. So it yeah. just amplifies the investment townspeople make through the CPA funding. And that is an increase over 22's match. So. Yes. Is that on here? Does it say? Uh, no. Yes. It just oh. before that column, FY22. Oh, great. Right. Okay. So it looks like about $6,000 higher, roughly, yeah. than last year. So that's mm -hmm. great. And that, of course, is money that's used to do various um, projects throughout mm -hmm. town, one of which we're going to be discussing a little bit later, right? Yes. Football? Right, mm -hmm. so um, we have a letter here from our fire chief, Chief Flaherty, um, informing us that due to some bulk pricing um, and a grant that he got, and Bob is really great about going after grants, um, the department was able to purchase all of the automated um, external defibrillators, the AEDs that he requested. And because of the um, pricing that he got and the grant, he is able to return um, $1,777.10 of unused ARPA funds, um, which is great. Um, so we appreciate the return of funds and certainly that all the AEDs have been updated and mm -hmm. replaced. And we thank um, Bob for that very much. Thank you, Chief. Um, Hatfield Luminarium is coming up on December 17th. We do not have a, another meeting before. Or no, we have a meeting on December 9th. 13th. 13th. December, December 13th. 13th. Um, so we will have some more details at that point, but I know people want a little more information. So it is December 17th. Mm -hmm. As usual, the ceremony will take place at the town hall at 6 o'clock. Um, and there'll be more details about some other things, but I would encourage people to watch the town's website and the town's social media pages mm -hmm. for further info because some of the details are still being worked out. So we, we, we're not able to make some of the announcements tonight um, that we were hoping. Um, and then, so finally, we do have a message to Hatfield residents that I want to read, and this is about our ambulance service. Um, over the past couple of weeks, uh, folks have heard or read social media comments that the select board is terminating our ambulance services. The idea that the select board does not support our emergency services or is planning to do away with ambulance response could not be more dishonest. We want to go on record as being fully supportive of our ambulance department and Chief Flaherty. The select board is aware of a high number of ambulance calls being answered by outside departments, most commonly Northampton, but sometimes South County. South County is the ambulance that runs out of Deerfield. It covers uh, Waitley, Sunderland, Conway. Yes, Deerfield. There may be another couple of towns. There's small three. Towns. Um, just so people know what South County means. Uh, last year's budget discussions included much brainstorming around this matter. Chief Flaherty has made every effort to find solutions to the problem, including adding on-call shifts and building a sizable roster of per diem EMTs. People have misunderstood or have not followed select board discussions. The select board has an obligation to examine all of our town services. With regards to EMS, it has become necessary for the board to review our current ambulance operations, specifically why we continue to miss calls, prompting outside EMS services to respond. If we're going to continue to run an independent ambulance service, we need to know exactly which shifts will be covered, which will be left unfilled, and at what financial cost to the townspeople. If we're going to go in front of town, the town to propose additional funding to create full-time positions to cover evening or weekend and or weekend shifts, it would be wrong of us to not do our, do our homework for the town, which may include 
in-house and outside service options. Additionally, we need to take into account other benefits and ramifications of building a full-time department. Ultimately, townspeople need all the facts to be able to make an informed decision. Over the past few years, out of a commitment to the health and safety of our residents, the town has added paramedic equipment, added a new ambulance, um, Night response was in jeopardy, and um, we added standby pay to incentivize people to cover those shifts or be available for those calls, I should say. Daytime trouble coverage was also in trouble. We added a chief paramedic and a firefighter EMT. Those are full-time positions to ensure Monday through Friday daytime coverage. The chief said he needed more people for coverage, and we provided an extra $180,000. Um, to be able to have the chief cover shifts with per diem employees. And we allocated $35,000 from ARPA funds for EMT weekend coverage. The town had many EMTs sign up to be available on call, but for some reason we still seem to have a large, we have, we have lost a large number of EMTs or they're not covering shifts or responding. Um, the chief would like to add another full-time person when factoring in the town's costs on that, we also need to include benefits. If the town is asked to authorize more money for operations, we need to show all the costs since the town might this might require a proposition two and a half override if we exceed our annual tax levy limit. The $180,000, I just want to add that we gave to Bob to be able to fill some of these shifts was one-time money um, that it's it's not built into next year's budget. And we, we knew that, that mm -hmm. um, but we were, um, we wanted to fund it to see what we could do with, with um, per diems. Um, therefore, any decisions to increase shifts, add full time would probably be outside of, of what we, we could do within the normal um, tax levy limit. Um, so what we're doing is our due diligence as your elected officials to provide an overview of potential options for town meeting to discuss. We are simply fact finding and not making any decisions one way or the other. We do know that Northampton is interested in submitting a proposal to be our coverage and South County is okay. interested in presenting a proposal where they would actually be our pri our responder. They would be our ambulance service and we would contract with them. We need to know what that looks like. In other, so what, what do we get for coverage for that? And what are the costs? What are the costs if we bring people on as full-time employees in Hatfield? And I, there's going to be a lot to be discussed here because people need to know it's not just having one EMT on staff for a shift. You really have to have two because the ambulance cannot roll without two people, um, one for driving, one for patient care. And, and quite frankly, this, this all came up, um, I just, I want to let townspeople know, probably a few years ago was the first inkling I had that, that we had a, a bit of a problem here. And it was when then Chief Narkowitz, uh, not Chief Narkowitz, Mayor Narkowitz, reached out to me and said, you know, Diana, we need to talk about how often Northampton is coming to Hatfield. And I, I just wasn't aware that that was happening. So met with Bob was pretty newly the chief at that point. Um, we sat down with Bob and he actually brought Chief Gone back mm -hmm. to be part of the discussion because he had um, information about, you know, sort of the history of everything. And we had the chief from um, Northampton and the the gentleman who I believe oversees their actual EMS um, the provision of EMS services. His name is Lindbergh, I think, was there. Yes. And, um, and we had a, a really good discussion. And Bob, um, we went through the roster of the EMTs he had at the time. And, you know, there's a lot that, that aren't able to respond. Sorry, that's my phone. Um, and, um, you know, the, some of them have very good reasons. They may have had a, a new baby or they're away at college or, you know, and we sort of went through that. So Bob immediately started talking to the EMS crew about, you know, ways to, to try to, you know, get more response. And, um, and then all of this other stuff came up with the extra staffing, the ex money for extra staffing. So 
you know, Bob's been um, creative mm -hmm. in trying to find yeah. solutions to this. Yeah. He's been aggressive about trying to find solutions to this. We've been supportive of his requests, um, but we still have a problem with response. The most responsible thing we can do is take a look at this and weigh all of our options. And un so that we as a board and townspeople know what all of the options are. And I think part of that also it will include a discussion of, about the service that we have right now and the, and the response, you know, people need, I need, I still haven't really seen information about exactly how often Northampton's having to come, what, what might be looking like trends and, you know, all of that stuff. So we're looking for, to gather all of that information about the current state of Hatfield Ambulance and then what our options would be to move forward doing it ourselves or outsourcing it to, to other services. That's where we are with that. Um, and I thought it was important to clear that up. Um, did either of you want to add anything? No, I, I, I agree with everything that we're saying because that's the way it's been. I mean, we've been progressively adding stuff each year to our ambulance department, trying to find a solution and now we're at the point where the town's going to have to decide, are we going to spend the money to have almost a full-time ambulance service or not? Or do you want to wait a half an hour, 45 minutes for an ambulance? That's what it comes down to. And it would what do you be... Mean, wait half an hour, 45 Well, if we don't have a full-time ambulance, we might have to wait for South County. Or we might have to well, wait for Well, that's if you're Hampton. using mutual aid. You know, yeah, I mean, I mean that, that's so, cons that, right, exactly. Right. So and, we, we have right. to, and we have to present all these facts to the residents to say, I mean, there's been so much in misinformation going out there. It's been sad. <laughs> all the stuff I think the three of us have had to deal with, with misinformation about the ambulance. So I'm glad that we're presenting it and then eventually the town will decide and here's all the numbers. Right. Do you want to add anything? I have two more things. I want no, to I, I, I think both of you hit the nail on the head, pretty much what I was thinking. And I will also go on record as always, uh, as I have always said, in support of um, Bob, Chief Flaherty, Chief Bob Flaherty yes. and, and the department. And to Ed's point, all the misinformation out there really was, was unfair and, and more importantly, untrue. And I wish I had had at least one of the people spreading that information contact me because then I could have told them exactly what the plan was, but nobody did. They, they took the comments they saw and ran with it and, and created, uh, I don't know, what's a good word? Not an issue, but, but you know, well, a little bit of created panic. some concern some for people. Because yeah. I think you know. people, you know, have thought we're, we just don't care about ambulance yeah. services. This is, specifically the motivation behind this is because we do care right. about ambulance service and we do care about response times. We want to make sure that when you call 911, you're going to get prompt and professional right. response. And we don't know how, how to proceed. We've, we've tried a bunch of solutions and I think we still have a problem. If I could just, uh, and along that, Part of it was the three, the three of us were going to make a decision. And this, this is a, a huge undertaking that town meeting will make the decision, not, not three members of the board sitting here. So again, I just wish people had reached out. Uh, we did get some emails about it and we appreciate those. Although the emails that came through the town administrator were basically relying on bad information that they had received. And it, they didn't realize it, of course. And, uh, but it was nice to see so many people supporting the ambulance, yes, quite and, frankly. And honestly, so that's a good thing. I, you know? I wasn't surprised at all. We, you know, we did get a bunch of emails of people saying, um, you know, either um, talking about, you know, response they had and how much they appreciated yep. it or, you know, that sort of thing. And, and none of that surprises us. We know that. We know that a thousand percent that our ambulance service is exceptional. Yep. They are exceptional. So on a positive I, side, it, it created discussion. So maybe yeah. that's a good thing. And, so, and I just I mean, want to add. We got discussion going on this. So that's that's probably it, okay. It, right? Yeah. It, and, and honestly, though, <laughs> I do want to point out, and that was one of my other points, discussion about this has been ongoing. So yes. some of what was insinuated is that all oh, this is happening in secret. 
anybody paying attention has heard these discussions because they've been part of our budget discussions um, for a while now. Since early um, in the year, since last budget cycle. So I mean, yes, it's, it's nothing. New. Yes. So this is a this has been a problem, you know, that's been going on for a while. And as I said, there's been a lot of effort put in um, by Bob um, yeah. to to. Um, oh, we have a hearing. So yeah. we, we, we do need to get to that. I just want to add one more thing, and that is that I'm not normally a consultant type of person, but I would like to suggest that the town actually hire a consultant to look at this because I think it's big and there's a lot of, if, if we bring on more full-time people, what is our facility adequate? There's a lot of things to, to think about here. This is a very big decision and I wanna have, um, I wanna make sure we look at it thoroughly. So that's my suggestion. We need to move on. That was just part of announcements. Um, so anyway, and again, if anyone has questions or wants to talk to me about this further, I'm happy to do that. My cell phone number is 413-575-2608. And townspeople should feel comfortable calling me at any time. I will get back to you if I don't take the call right away. Okay, so moving along, um, we do have a hearing scheduled for 545. I'm sorry, we're running a few minutes over, but that was an important discussion to have. Um, so we have um, received a, an application for an all alcoholic beverages liquor license from the Heritage Tavern LLC. Um, this is at 127 Elm Street, what we would all probably call the grill and chill. Um, so if you would come up, we, if, if there's two of you, you can bring a second chair. Three of you, you can bring three chairs. How are you? It's good to see you. So if you could just introduce yourselves and then maybe um, take a few minutes to talk about your plans there. Yeah, I'm just going to be on the first day. Uh, this is uh, Terry Anderson and this is Mark Pinkham. They are Heritage Chevron LLC. Um, I guess the liquor license that had been at this location expired. So this is an application for a new license because it, the premises isn't currently licensed, but it had been in the past and they're looking for an all alcohol restaurant license um, to include the building and a patio in the back that is to be constructed um, as part of the license premises. So we've submitted the application. Um, they have some additional information to present to you in terms of the menu and the concept. And oh, excellent. So, forth. so yeah. I'll let them go ahead. Sure. So nice to meet you all. Um, meet you. It's been such a great experience so far, I have to say, just um, getting to know the community a little bit. Um, I did submit, I sent an email earlier of a proposal I put together. Um, I did bring copies, but I can pass one around if, you, if sure. you're interested. And it's really just going over what our idea, our idea is and what the concept for the Heritage Tavern is. Here, I got another copy too. Thank you. So essentially what we want to do um, in the establishment is to create some American cooking, some um, good food, um, carry on the tradition from a Cork family that have been incredibly supportive. Good pizza, good food, a place for the community to go. Um, again, full service and to really carry on the heritage, hence the name of the building itself. So we've gotten to learn a lot, again, about the community and about the building itself, dating back about 100 years or more. And we really were looking for something to do again. I've done a, a similar business in Enfield, Connecticut, where I'm from, and really wanted to uh, expand and do something more uh, full service for our community. So this is where we are. And again, we are a family-oriented business, and, and this is what we'd like. So to it would be a pizza? Pizza, burgers. Um, oh, so like a, yeah. a bunch of, not just pizza. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And they do have a menu, I think. Yeah, I have, I have a sample menu. And do you have a um, time frame? I mean, I know that it's dependent on the processing of some things like exactly. this, but um, do you have a, a rough time frame of when you might yeah, want to open? we have a target of hopefully um, mid-January. So a little bit aggressive, but uh, we're doing uh, some work there already. Um, another uh, nice point that I think tying in the community is that uh, we are really embedding ourselves. So we got to uh, borrow some pallets of tobacco pallets from the pork um, 
over their uh, facility over there. And we're going to refinish part of the bar with tobacco <coughs> pallet wood me. that comes from Hatfield. So again, kind of really a concept that ties in history and community. That's fun. And, and real fun food, um, comfort food, tavern food, uh, family oriented, certainly. Um, children should feel comfortable, you know, coming here. Great. And, uh, yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Got do you have an yeah, do you, can sorry. we see I would love a menu. We've got sure. only two copies right now, but yeah. Oh, here's the concept. I was just wondering when you thought you would be like days of the week or hours, have you gotten to that point yet what you were thinking of? Or yeah, we, we do want to do seven days a week. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we, we would do probably extended hours on the weekends, but opening at 1130 so we could capitalize on lunch, lunches. Lunch and dinner. Oh, lunch. Yeah, yeah that would be yeah, great. Yeah, really want yeah. to provide that to the community. Um, lunches, dinner, again, the advent of a patio outside, you know, would be wonderful, I think, too, in the summertime. And yeah. Is there is there some type of no? There's no diagram. And perhaps an entertainment license down the road yes. for that outdoor yes. patio. For purposes of the liquor license, they'd like 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. seven days a week. They may not be open that many hours, exactly. but they'd like yeah. the ability. Yeah. To have that many hours. Um. And it looks, Marlene, like all of this is in order. It is I just noticed a looking reviewing the diagrams which are included in the application. Yeah. It doesn't appear that the outside premise that you would fence in is on in the diagram. There's a drawing. There's a sketch oh, maybe drawing of the outside patio. Um, there's a oh, CAD okay. drawing. There should be a CAD in there. Okay, well. the I do see it now. Page. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that would be built in compliance with the ABCC patio guidelines sure. in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, restricted yeah. access and and uh, you know entrance from the mm -hmm. interior of the building only, and we yeah. not not having people passing drinks over the. <clears throat> Outside right. supervision. Um, the description you know. of the application of the Thank premises, mm -hmm. it's, it's added there, but I just, yeah. in the diagram, I yes. see it, but I see it on that other yeah. page now. I love the names of some of these dishes. <laughs> Did you know so it? there's the grill and chill burger and the Smithsonian and the paddock, <laughs> the paddock pizza. So people who've been around a long time will we'll we'll get it and we'll, we'll know it. that. It's a, yeah. it's a nice touch. So. Well, I'm I'm excited to to see this um, you know reopen. Um, I think we've all been missing that spot, um, so I'm that's great, and it, it certainly looks like everything is in order with the license. So I would take a motion on that. Uh, which if, is fine. I, I just can, didn't know if the public had you know right. Oh, oh you know. And if I can also hearing. make a note, the application is to. Um, it's not just to issue the license, but it's also to approve Mark Pinkham as the manager. Sure. Um, which is included right. within. Yeah. Okay. Did you? Is there anyone here for public comment on this? Okay. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> so um, we will go ahead. Do we close the hearing before we vote on? Yes. This? Okay. So we will go ahead and close the hearing on this um, since there is no public comment. And then I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the liquor license for the Heritage Tavern at 127 Elm Street, Hatfield, Mass. I'll second that. I want to say that, welcome to Hatfield. Yes. That business has been there a long time. There's been a lot of success out of that building, and I hope you have success. Thank you. Could you just reference the manager, Mark oh, Pinkham? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I've been asked to reference the manager's name just to yeah. be safe. And uh, as okay. with the resident agent being Mark Pinkham, the, the manager. Pardon me. Manager. The liquor license manager. Liquor license manager. So you made that motion. I did. No. Second it. A motion's been or made and second. Any further discussion? Oh, yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Thanks Thank you and Thank welcome. You keep a, keep us Thank posted. You. Yeah. Certainly yes. Yeah. Looking you forward to. Let you send the application into the ABC. We will. Thank you. Well. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hey, Tim. Um, do you want to take up the minutes by any chance? Yeah, we can go yeah, back we in do order. That. Of we, our, we, we're going to just backtrack a little bit because um, we, we had to skip some things to do that hearing on time. So we have the minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes for November 9th, 2022. Second. The motion made and second. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Can I just also backtrack on announcements? 
we did receive this um, email from John Wilkes mm, about the right. CPA project signs going up. Um, so those there were some CPA project signs put up around town, and this work was done by Mike Bartlett, who donated his time. And so we just want to acknowledge signs, that yeah. and thank Michael very much for doing that. I, I'm sorry I missed that in the beginning. Um, and I also didn't read public participation. Should I do that? Mm. Okay. Yeah, but in the interest of time. Hmm? Yeah, it is public forum if we're going back up to the top. Yeah. Okay. And then we can get back in. The... Do you want me to read the public forum? No, please? no. Okay. I don't think so. Um, Unless you want to. Nope. Um, so next topic is the. Um, Wait, I'm sorry. What I meant was actual public forum. Or if anybody was here oh, for that. Oh, oh. I, I, we did skip over that. Is anyone here for public forum tonight? Okay. We went a little out of order, and I apologize for that. Um, so our, now we can get to the public forum on the proposed water and sewer rate increases. Right. So we have um, Dave here. And Phil. Hello, Dave. Hello, Phil. Do you have any uh, intro you'd like to make or you want me to um, dive in and? <laughs> no, I mean, I, you can dive in. I mean, this is, you know, we, we've been working on getting these rates to where they need to be. Um, you know, I know people are feeling like there's been, you know, rate increases sort of stacked on top of each other, but that was coming on the heels of not doing it for quite a while and also needing to catch up and making this much more user funded. Right. Um, and as opposed to, funded by general tax dollars, so. Right. Uh, just for the record, Dave Prickett with DPC Engineering, uh, joined by Phil mm -hmm. Genovese, DPW Director for the town. Um, as you mentioned, Diana, um, you know, the challenge now on both the water and the sewer side is the rates just basically reflect um, the implementation of projects on both sides uh, that the residents have authorized. So it just comes down to doing the math on an annual basis. Um, what is the budget, the operating budget, plus the, I'll call it the mortgage or the debt service associated with those projects. How many users do we have? How much water are they gonna use, et cetera? And it's numerator divided by denominator. So just to kind of recap things, what's proposed this evening is uh, no change to the rate structure itself for either water or sewer. The same approach to calculating uh, water and sewer rates on an annual basis. Um, what's proposed this evening on both sides is a change in the unit cost um, on the sewer side. Um, it's dollars per 100 cubic feet. Um, and actually, same thing on the water side. Current sewer, let's just start with sewer to keep things clean. Um, the current sewer rate for FY22 um, is $9.34 per 100 cubic feet. Um, we're halfway into FY23. Um, so I think we probably all would have wanted to do this a month or two ago. There's been a lot going on. But long story short, on the sewer side, what's proposed is about a 10% increase from last year. Um, and that basically allows us to collect the revenue needed in the second half of FY23 to meet the budget. So the proposed rate for FY23 is $10.27 per hundred cubic foot. Again, that represents about a 10% increase. Um, for the average residential sewer customer, that's an increase of about 60 bucks for the year or $5 per month if you break it down on that basis, just so people can kind of understand what that means. On the water side, um, again, very similar. You have... Um, your debt service being encumbered for your recent projects, which the residents are well aware of. Um, you currently have uh, a water rate of $4.91 per 100 cubic feet. And the proposed rate increase um, is 10.1% up to $5.40 per 100 cubic foot. That represents an increase of about, um, looks like $38 per year. So roughly three bucks a month, a little over three bucks a month difference. So that's what's, pardon me, that's what's proposed for FY23 on both sides. Um, there are no changes to 
you know, trying to put more money in the retained earnings, the increase in the budget is strictly related to the increase in operating cost and debt service. For both sides, we've calculated what we think will come next year, just mm -hmm. in, in, in awareness. But yes, I was going to ask about the FY24. Yeah. Any questions on 23 thus far from, no. from the board? Okay. So for 24, um, on both the water and sewer side, um, those, those projects that are ongoing come to a close, which is great. The infrastructure gets built, but the debt service increase is associated with that. So for the sewer side in FY24, um, we're looking at about a 16% increase up to a proposed rate of $11.96 per 100 cubic foot. And on the water side, uh, the proposed increase um, is similar um, at 17% up to a unit price of $6.32 per 100 cubic foot. So oftentimes we get into these sewer rate hearings. We've done this together for the past four years. Um, things have landed, I think, pretty close to how, how we've all thought they'd shape out. The town has done a really good job of not only adequately budging its water and wastewater needs, you've increased your reserves. So if you have a rainy day or a problem, and Phil's going to curse me for even bringing that up, you have a little bit of a cushion uh, to deal with those things. So kudos to the town for doing that. And I just want to, just for the benefit of townspeople, you mentioned the, you know, that the rates go up somewhat because of projects, approved projects. You just list those so people know which projects they are and which projects they aren't, basically. Yeah, I'll start on the wastewater side. Um, it's it's essentially one, so it's the treatment plan upgrade. Right. Um, so uh, the residents authorized last year, um, as I recall, it was about an $11 million uh, upgrade to the plant. Uh, that project's currently in the design phase with construction anticipated over the next 24 months. Um, and again, as we close the loan for that project, um, likely with USDA, um, the increase in the budget represents the mortgage payment for that, that project, and it's substantial. On the water side, um, as I understand it, Phil, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that's, that's not my specialty here in Hatfield, uh, but you've had some transmission system upgrades, uh, several of them to, you know, uh, reinforce, replace, update your main uh, distribution infrastructure. Am I missing anything on top of that? No, that's it. Okay. That's the big one. Okay. It is not, none of this is, has anything to do with the Route 5 project. Just want to make that clear, right? No. And we're going to continue looking Correct. for grants. Correct or no? Tom, well, the town share of that must be. Well, the town well, share. The town share. The share. Right. But not the, the roof, not five, five, right, okay. offset o by the Only the user fee right. portions of things right. on either side of the equation are, are in this yeah. formula. Right. It excludes okay. anything related to the general fund portion. Okay. I mean, that's a that's a great presentation. I hope townspeople understand. And again, it's it's getting the rates to levels that also make it more likely for us to be able to access USDA grants yeah one of the one of the things that was most important on the wastewater side was five years ago the sewer costs were considered pretty low statewide mm -hmm. um, that hurt the community relative to grant eligibility uh, so a conscious yeah. effort was made by the town over the last three years to increase those rates um, you're to the point where Hatfield on the wastewater side even with the proposed um, rates as, as I've outlined, you're still probably only at about the 75th percentile statewide. So wastewater is an expensive utility. Um, most folks statewide are paying over $1,000 per year um, for wastewater costs. Um, it, there's a lot of things we can't control, sludge, labor, power, chemicals. On the water side, um, everything is relative in the world, but your cost of water is still well below the median statewide um, in Massachusetts. and. I think that's attributed to, you know, um, that you've invested in, in the infrastructure, that you've done a good job, that you have a really good high quality water system, um, and, and that's kept the cost low. But it's hard to not have percentage increases that look dramatic when your rates start off as low as they were. Right. Right. Okay. Appreciate it. Yeah. I, I'd like to point out to the townspeople, this has been a long process. This didn't happen overnight. This goes back 
when you first came on board, what's it like five years ago or? I've been working longer, with, with Phil in the town that, for right? almost so, 20 years. I say so longer than that. Well. <laughs> Time right. flies. Yeah. Right. right. And trying to figure out how to stop kicking the can down the road. And the can stops here, I guess. And we've, uh, we've incorporated we've some stuff. done a good stuff. job easing into yeah. it. But now, you know, eventually when that mortgage hits, there, you can't avoid a step increase. And that's why we not only laid out what we need to do this year or what we recommend to do this year, but what's coming next year, because it's fair to the yeah, residents. Yeah, no, I think it's understand. good information yeah. For, yeah. for residents to right. have. Yeah. yeah, Phil and I had, had discussed, uh, you three know, years. a two-year right. rate increase over two years and felt that was um, the way we should present this to the select board. I, I would also suggest to anybody, uh, you know, we have the chart in front of us and those who, right. and there's people, folks in the audience, but this is on the town's website mm -hmm. um what we're looking at it is so if anybody wants to you know see what we're talking about and what dave and phil have presented uh the information is there and if you had seen it before it might not make as much sense as if you've watched and listened tonight it probably make more sense if you now go online and look at it mm. so right just, there is a lot a of suggestion. good information yeah not just the the rates um right. but then there's also the reasons why there's also know? information at the bottom if you have questions yep. to call bill or tony or kenny so mike did you have a question yes um so thanks to dave and phil for for the presentation um and, and in terms of need, I don't have any qualms whatsoever about what we need to do with the structural aid in the community for water and sewer. Um, in fact, I just experienced a little bit of a microcosm of that <laughs> today. We heard, Street. we heard. <laughs> but nevertheless, that's, that was found out and fixed. Um, question, uh, have you guys carried the spreadsheet out further than just a year and a half? Um, that's the question I have. What's What's... 25 and 26 look like and and the other is um, does the do these numbers include the debt service that's projected for the sewage treatment plant and if it does are that we actually going to incur those that debt service in fiscal 24 I mean when is that project even going to go out to bid and be funded whatever so I'm, I'm wondering, I understand the, the sense for why there would be a large increase in, in 24, but I don't quite understand how the debt service related to the sewage treatment plant is integrated into this. So, so, so Dave, is this a projected debt service or is this a, you see what I'm saying? No, I, I do. There it sounds like I borrow for a couple of years at least. Go ahead, yeah, Dave. Like yeah, we'll, okay. we'll let Dave answer. Well, first yeah. off, they're great questions. Um, I really appreciate the, the thought that went in. The short answer is on the sewer side or the wastewater side, yes, it does reflect getting us all the way up to in, uh, incurring that first year's debt. Um, the gentleman, and I already forgot his first name. I'm Mike. terrible with names. Mike, Mike uh, also had a great question. When will that debt, debt hit the books, right? So it's likely going to be right at the tail second half of FY24, it could even be the beginning of FY25, Mike. Either way, um, what we didn't want to do is anticipate something in 24, not be in position to cover those costs with the rates. And one of the, one of the issues at play is with USDA, again, depending on the extent of the grant that they offer, we incur the debt when we close the loan, and that can be somewhat variable. Sometimes they split the money into two pots. So let's say it was 50-50 and your grant percentage was 20%. You'd end up closing the first loan when you spent 80% of the first half of the project. So um, it very well could, Mike, go into FY25, and that's a very good question and good comment on the sewer side. Um, but even if it did, that step would that step would be the same. And then beyond that, your question was, is it carried forward? The spreadsheet hasn't been developed beyond FY24, but I can say on the wastewater side, definitively, the annual increases there are more on the O&M side, what happens with labor, what happens with sludge, power, chemical, 
and less so with changes to debt service. I believe the same is true on the water side. It, it just so happens that the debt is kind of hitting on both sides at the same time in the same year. Um, the water may, I think the water really will hit in FY 23 and 24. I don't think there's less wiggle room on the water side. I think that's nearer and, and for sure. On the sewer side, the best I can say is it might be the beginning of FY25. I just don't want the town to not be positioned for that. So would we, could we, would we be correct in assuming that going forward, looking for, looking ahead to the, say the next three or five years, that knowing what we know now in terms of borrowings and debt service and some assumptions around operating expenses going forward, we're not going to see these kinds of increases continue, that it's there are very likely to be increases that are more associated with inflation than um, you know, the normal kinds of operating expense increases that we've, we've seen over the last several years. Yep, and I would say construction for eons, I could count on annual inflation being like 4% a year for construction and O&M was like two to three. All that's been thrown out the window the last three years on both sides. I can say statewide in Massachusetts, annual wastewater inflation for O&M costs is about 7%. So it's almost double inflation. And again, it's driven by, as you said, Mike, things we can't control. So I, I would think that FY25 and beyond that you'd likely you level know, out be really? seeing, well, in level increases, no action alternatives at that point would likely be in that three to five, six, maybe 7% worst case, but it's um it, it the formula has changed there's um it's a pretty tight labor pool for operators as as you know Phil can attest to um there's just a lot of things we can't control but I think that's fair to say that this is the last projected step in the next you know five to seven years question. I, yep. I didn't quite understand I know you guys want to move along I didn't quite understand what you assumed for the USDA grants impact on this? Yep. Do you assume that we were fully funding the debt burden until we get that money or what did you make for an assumption here? These calculations are based on an 80-20 loan grant split. That may be us funding. Yep. Uh, no, you you 80% loan. Well, they would fund the entire project as a long-term 40-year note at a right. likely a poverty interest rate. The grant percentage, we've always said that we want to be in the 20 to 33% range, realistically. Yep. I didn't plan on 33. I planned on 20% grant. Yep. It could be better. And if it's better, I don't think anybody's going to be mad if we have flat <laughs> yeah. sewer rates for, for two or three years. But in all likelihood, um, I think we're pretty close. I think we've got this dialed in okay, pretty well. Just one other quick question for Phil and, and for you guys up there at the head table. Phil, where, where are we at with the second phase of extending new water line from basically Circle Drive to the center of town. Uh, at one point, the goal was to basically replace that main all the way from, you know, where to the center of town. Correct. And and we funded, the, uh, what do you want to call it, the first half of that. Um, where, where are we at in terms of capital planning for that second major phase of bringing that water line down to the center of town? It'll be in fiscal 25. Okay. Uh, and so that's not included in this at all? No, not yet. Operating wise? Right. Because we're, we're trying to nail down the, what the cost will be now that the cost of so pipe is So potentially fiscal 25 could be affected by that if it the could town be. decides to do it. If it yes. If, if it's going to come out of the rate payers, yes. Do you have any idea off the top of your head what that might cost? Well, the original estimate was 1.7, so I'm going to say it's at least double. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to right. move along. Thanks, Good. Mike. Thanks. Good to see you. Glad everything worked out okay today. Um, so are we voting these tonight? Yes, if the board is, is willing to do that. Yes, please. I'll make a motion to approve the proposed fiscal year 2023 and fiscal year 2024 water and sewer rates as proposed. Second. A motion made and second. Any further discussion? All those I, I'm sorry. I'm just going to thank Dave. Oh, yeah. Um, Always a pleasure. Thank for, you. for coming. And, so. and Phil, thank you. Yep. So all those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Thank you, Dave. You do yes. make it. You explain it in such a way that people can understand it. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate that. Right. Even I can understand. Even I can years, understand so, it. To bring it to where it is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Have a good night. Thanks, Dave. Thank you Thank so you, much. Dave. So we're going to just keep moving along here because we really do have a pretty hefty agenda. Next, we're going to um, speak with the Recreation Committee about um, a proposed pickleball court. Hello. We do. We have copies. Thank, Thank you. you I, I just got it fairly recently. Hi, Julie. Um, yeah, hi, how are you? Welcome Again, back. Yeah. I feel like really left out because I seem to be the only person who has not caught pickleball I fever. That. I'm I know I gotta do it. <laughs> I used to love tennis, so I'm sure I would, would love, love this. Pickleball. Um so do you want to talk about this proposal? Um so townspeople can learn what you're sure. So uh maybe introduce yourselves. Sorry. I'm Julie Pokola. Danielle Stanchewski, and this is Phil. So um, I know that Rec is sponsoring this, but Julie is the heart behind all of this, so I'm going to let her. Okay, but you're here as, in I'm your here capacity as, as a member of the yes. Recreation Commission. Yes. Okay. So uh, I think you'd have to be deaf, dumb, and blind not to know that pickleball is just exploding all over the country. Um, I see ads now with people playing pickleball. It's articles in the paper all over the place. And in Western Mass, it's true as well. Um, you see many communities are, are building courts. And um, here in Hatfield, when the Open Space Committee did a, a survey of what's needed, what's wanted in town, both pickleball and tennis came up very strongly. Mm -hmm. um, we have a roster for people to play pickleball in Hatfield. And right now there's 136 people on that roster. Uh, right now we're playing indoors at the elementary school we had three days available to us and uh, 70 people played in the last week. So it's just incredible demand for pickleball. Um, what we're proposing is a, a fork. If you look at the diagram on page uh, five, uh, we're proposing a, a layout of uh, 120 feet by 89 feet. In that we have one tennis court. That's the area that's outlined in red and four pickleball courts. As you can see on there, you can fit two pickleball courts in the area that's uh, taken up by one tennis court. So that uh, we have the ability for people to both play tennis and to, to play pickleball. Uh, the area we're looking at, at uh, for the location for the courts is between the elementary school and the pavilion, somewhere in that area um, for the courts. And uh, we got some preliminary numbers from a variety of companies to put together a budget. Um, we had to make some estimations of what kind of inflation there will be over the next year. And um, based upon that, we came up with a, a cost of $128,000. Yeah. And this would be a CPA. This is CPA. This is a CPA grant application, correct? I'm just I'm just curious if the site has been determined. I, I mean, the exact location because you have behind the school they had soccer going on for for years, and they also have the little league field. Is all this been changed and moved? Is little league now? Where where is everything? So there's three spots that we can do it currently behind HES. Um, I would love to see it back to the left of the pavilion, but I feel like that will be troublesome or could be troublesome. Um, that is still technically town land, um, but it might interrupt like the bonfire, which we didn't want to do. Um, so okay. So right where about where they burn, uh, right behind it, but yes, okay. um, uh, it fits nicely to the left of the pavilion, but we foresee there could be issues. So we um, have two other options. If right where the parking lot is, we could do it on the left. Like if you're looking at the pavilion, we could do it to the left here or to the right here. Um, we might have to adjust cost a little bit with this because we would have to move the baseball, um, which 
would be fine. And it's actually sitting right in the middle of the field. It's not the best position anyways. Um, but that would be. But then how would that cost. affect parking? Because that's that's the part of the field where people park, right? For no, pavilion events? Um, nope. So if we did, so the parking for HES is right here and then we would do it at the front of the. Oh, of okay. The, so right along the parking lot, not yeah, out back. Okay. I'm exactly. envisioning yeah, that. No, I didn't, okay. no, I was very much against doing it back there parking and it's so in the middle of the field. What about, what about space. during the day that space being used because of school? Correct. That would be something we'd have to. So either way we need to make sure that um, either the Lions Club and or the fire department are okay with the pavilion side, or we'd have to make sure the school would be okay with it. Um, I, I think they yeah, would Yeah, I mean, be. I would there be concerned with cars parking on it. Will this be fenced in? Yes. Yep. Okay, so it'll be fenced in. So, But I mean, that's, you know, event parking is really important for all of the events down there. Right. Um, and then certainly I wouldn't want to infringe on the space used by the bonfire. So right. that would be a right. concern for me, for sure. Right. Yep. But up close to the school seems like a great idea. Yes. Is, I know that a lot of people play pickleball during the day, during the week. Yes. So there'd have to be concern, uh, you know, considerations for. Right. So speaking to the school board to make sure they're okay with right. it. We did speak um, to the Smith Academy because at one point we were looking at right. putting it there. Um, that was right on top of the building. And then our opinion, I mean, Connor was open arms, but. Yeah, I think that would be a distraction for the kids during the day and not as welcoming. So for sure behind HES is probably the best location out of what we have for space. So, I, I mean, I, I, I think it's great. I, I know people would use it. Um, one of my concerns, because I used to use the tennis courts all sure. the time back, back in the day, way back. I remember, Ed, there were tennis courts down there. Oh, yeah. And then they fell into disrepair and there was no... Um, you know, we hadn't made provisions within the town budget to maintain um, these. And frankly, they became dangerous. I mean, you can't play right. tennis on a cracked court. Right. Um, the fence got rusty and, you know, eventually it just all came down. So there has to be a plan right. for the ongoing maintenance of these. Um, and I, I don't know anything about this, so I don't know what that looks like. Maybe you could say for several years, there wouldn't need to be anything because they'd be so new, but I'm just curious, you know. So for several years, there, there shouldn't be, uh, there should be minimal costs. Uh, it really depends on the, the base underneath the courts, you know, if it's properly uh, designed and uh, laid out so that there's good drainage. Um, but we do live in New England and there are frost heaves and, you know, eventually there will be cracks. But um, for the first several years, uh, there should be minimal costs. Yeah, but and, I think and Phil, Phil has already yeah. said that you know yeah. that they were going to maintain uh, that location. I would so. also suggest Danielle and Julie probably weren't part of this, but yes. we had years and years with the new elementary school of sidewalks that would heave because enough mm -hmm. trap rock and drainage proper drainage wasn't mm -hmm. put in originally. Right. I say that right. to you because some of us in the room <laughs> remember all those meetings. Um, again, you know, yes. whoever's designing it or however this goes, I would just suggest you keep that in the back of your mind. Whatever they say you need, double it because mm -hmm. it's going to save you. It'll cost at a little more up front, but it's going to yeah. save the headaches that Diana's talking about yeah. and, um, from cracking and frost heaving and all that, hopefully. Yeah, it's important yes. that we use a company, a well-respected company. Yes. That yeah. Designs them correctly yep. because I've seen, I've played on courts that haven't been designed correctly and they do start cracking. Right well, away. and sometimes it's like anything, you're better off paying the money up front to exactly. avoid the problems down the road. So, mm -hmm. Would it be possible to, given that it sounds like you have two or three potential um, mm -hmm. locations within that property, would it be possible to stake them out? Sure. Oh, yeah, we've just, we you know, just for an idea to it, see where yeah. from the from the children's perspective, from the Lions Club, the bonfire, uh, because I was also thinking that. And I certainly can't speak for the Lions Club, but I would imagine if there's nothing going on there, parking 
won't be an issue for people playing pickleball. Yeah, it, but if there's events, that could create the issue for the pickleball yeah, people I'm curious and the tennis how people. How far you know? back so, people park? Right. So, like at the bonfire, Carrie, how far back do people go? Well, it, 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 it's not going to. It's just on the grass. So just a one nighter, the though. Parking lot itself, and we, we don't use anything to the community garden side anymore because they farm on that land. But I think this would be on that. So, no, so, no. So, the community gardens would, would have been our first choice. Right. That's not possible. So, if the pavilion, this is the pavilion, um, their blacktop goes actually mm. over onto Hat, Hatfield town property land. Um, so, we would propose if that was an, an option to have it to the left of the pavilion so it's not where the fire was it's but it's pretty close <laughs> it's pretty close it's where you put your so it's where we put all the, the, the entertainment then no or the state all the to the left of the yeah like back where the dumpster is Oh, it's a one night right? Event, so right? All our, yeah all of our, all yeah the end, they have to go back there. right yeah so I mean, that could be, the the I you said more it be up near this parking lot of the school. That's a different one. <laughs> so there's three locations and right, one yeah, of right. them, the mm. pavilion, if it were to the left of the pavilion, that would be. Right. I, I think there's three options. I think whenever it's staked out, we should make sure well, that you guys. And that's to Ed's point in the rec Well, you're exactly. on a rec committee, but the, yes. you know, baseball fields and soccer yeah. fields and all that stuff. Yeah. So yeah. if so, we did it up by HES parking lot, we would have to restructure the fields for the kids. Jeff, yeah. Michael? Yeah, just a quick question on location. Sure. Daniel, um, I'm sure you guys, have you thought about this? But I'm just going to bring it up anyway. Yeah. Because I don't know if you did. <laughs> What about the land behind the center school? No. <laughs> we thought about yeah. it. <laughs> we thought about that. No, we definitely uh, considered it. Yeah. Um, there's a lot more cons to that spot, and the cost would skyrocket really? to get all. Just because we access. were thinking to go all the and way back. Is, and you then, know, there's not going to be parking back there, and now you've got these. No, I don't like that idea. Just I, I went down there to measure it, and just like access, trying to get down there. It would cost a lot to just create access mm -hmm. down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, access and parking would certainly be. Those yeah. measures would be. We certainly yeah. thought yeah. about that. We have a great, we have <laughs> a great, well, unless you, you know, went down the dike with something, but, um, you know, the there time. is, yeah. you know, I mean, that, that land is basically all unused yeah. and available. And yeah. if we're struggling to really find a fit somewhere, maybe we definitely thought of that more. spot for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you looking for from us tonight? Just just to get the word out or do you want us to? Nope. Uh, it's part of the application yeah. that we run it by you folks and make sure that you're on board and we're going in the right direction. Um, when we stake it out, do you want to come over physically and look at it or do you want us to take pictures? I would probably like to look. I'd at like to see it. it. Yeah. So like we should schedule it. a time. Yeah. And I think you should make sure that people from fire have a chance to look for at sure. it. For sure. I, I would say definitely the fire department and even um, the Lions Club. Yeah, the Lions Club. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they can see all the spots. We have reached out um, to those folks too. So, okay. Um, yeah, and then, and then, you know, I would just have concerns with, you know, upkeep and maintenance at some point. It's, it's, it has to be thought of as part of, of it. course. And then and also the yeah. schools, um, you know, the schools um, opinion of people just being down in the general area, you know, during the day. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're way back where you're talking about, that's different, but you know, if it, it is one of the options is up closer, you know, right. they have to be aware of that. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. we'd like, we'd love if we had your support. You know, based I think it's a great idea. Location. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a great idea once some of the details are worked out. Yeah. And then. And I know you haven't priced cost. anything on the lighting because you don't know where it's going to go. So it's it's hard to get a right. price so that was gonna, for any kind of light be lighting. until yeah, you lighting. know. And I know you've, lighting it appears you've talked to Phil about <laughs> some maintenance and some taking it. care of it too. So right. yeah. that's another issue. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, a lot Good. of thought went into it, and we appreciate that. Perfect. Well, we appreciate you taking the time today. Thank All the courts working out next door. 
I mean, I know it's probably too, you, you sound like you're using, utilizing the elementary school. Yeah, there, it's just difficult because we can't really schedule anything because mm. we don't know if people are going to be playing basketball. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's, people have played there intermittently, but we can't, Hard like, to. we have, the, we have a roster and people sign up to play in the school and that gets filled up right away. Sure. But we, we just can't do that because we can't That's have people thing. sign up and then find yeah. out they can't play. So people that play, you know, for the town, mm -hmm, it got to me. So thank yeah. you for spearheading that as oh, well. You're welcome. Yeah. Appreciate your yeah. letting us do that. Mm -hmm. Sure. Seems like it'll be a lot of fun for a lot of people. It's a lot of fun. And if you want to learn, I teach people all the time. <laughs> I was promoting that, right? Yeah. She is. She is the heart. <laughs> yeah. 171 people. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so next we have um, appointments and resignations from the Council on Aging. Marlene, so we've received um, two resignations on the count from the Council on Aging. Yes, yes, and those um, yeah have been acknowledged. We announced those, right? Oh, yes. The resignations yeah. okay. we did. Yeah, yeah that was right. Susan Hurley and Cindy Doty prior to right. Susan, and the Council on Aging Board uh, has voted to um, or recommend because the appointment is by the Select Board. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Ellen Abbott and Pearl Judd. I'll make a motion to appoint Ellen Abbott to the um, Council on Aging um, to fill out the remaining two years of an existing term. Second. A motion made and second. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion to appoint Pearl Judd to the COA Board of Directors uh, for a term of three years. Second. A motion made and second. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, ladies. Yes, thank you. Okay. And that has to be signed. Okay, moving right along. We're gaining a little time here, hopefully. Um, Phil, we have a um, an application for a water abatement. Yeah, so there's a water abatement for 58 West Street. The bill was, as you can see, a lot more than was normal for that property. Uh, new homeowners moved in, and the bill was still high, and we went and checked the meter, and we discovered that the meter was faulty. So we replaced the meter, and we're looking for the abatement. I'll make a motion to abate the $559.74 at 58 West Street due to the broken meter. Second. A motion made and second. Any further discussion? Oh. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Could I ask Phil a question while he's up there? Yep. That I meant to ask earlier. Um, so, and actually, this I'm concerned with all the painting of the streets that I see by the various organizations that are using the streets of Hatfield to have bike races and, and marathons and 5Ks and things like that. And I understand the need for showing the direction that runners, bikers, et cetera, should, should move in. Um, but I think those, some of the paintings, at least the most recent one, where there's three or four lines, white lines with arrows, um, all over, at least around the block that I've seen, appear to be in paint, not chalk, because they're still there after multiple rainstorms. Would, is that correct? That correct. So, so I'm, I'm asking Phil about the paint part, but I think to Marlene and Karen, as we put our forms together for people that want to utilize Hatfield, mm -hmm. and I think we should talk to Billy Corza or whoever, if he's still in charge at Alliance Club, that to the application needs to be added something that says, you will not deface the streets of Hatfield by using non, uh, you know, permanent paint. by using mm -hmm. permanent paint mm -hmm. because we we get it. You know, Berkshire Gas has to do it. EverSource has to do it. Phone company, well, the town. <laughs> well, I, I know they have to do it. What yeah. I'm saying is, it's turning into yeah. like a graffiti streets. You know, and it 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 looks like crap. And I would think that it could be confusing to some of these down the road potentially, to some of these public utilities that see an arrow and maybe they assume it's whatever. So. Well, and there are options that yeah, they can chalk. use for, yeah. <laughs> for a one-day event. I mean, so 
so I think that should be added, and I think it needs to be spelled out to to the applicants that mm -hmm. you are not doing this anymore. You know. Yes. You know, and I don't know if they do. Maybe there's some sort of a fee we charge them to have the DPW go out and have to paint over it. I mean, you know, or a removal fee. Yeah, I, I just can't imagine groups and organizations doing this in the first place, to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, I'm not a runner and I'm not a biker, but I mean, jeepers, creepers, man. What you has know. happened in, in the past with that is that someone had done exactly what they did this last time and used permanent paint. And a few months later, there was a dig safe there that there was an emergency dig that there was a faint line there. And nobody knew what it was. Because it was, you know, it was almost faded out, but there was still a line there. Right. So, I mean, there you had to do some kind of investigation, and then finally, finally, somebody said, "Well, that must have been from the road race or whatever it was." Right. So. All right. So, I, I guess, so you were sitting there, and I knew you and I talked briefly about it, about the paint, but I, I think Marlene, Karen, if we could maybe have that add, you know, my colleagues agree, have something like that added to our application, building use form, no whatever. permanent markings. And maybe reach out to Billy Corza at the Lions Club and see if they could do the same thing. Um, Phil, do, are you contacted when someone wants to use the streets? Okay. So it goes through Mike. I was just mm -hmm. going to say the police chief I know receives, um, you know, we come in, information. We come in after the event and yeah. say there's lines painted all over the right yeah. and on occasion my office will receive right. a call um and we only know about never... it if there's alcohol being served because we would have <laughs> had to approve the license so this is one of those if, oh, if for it an event at the line correct Club? so if, it, if, yeah. it's a, if it's an event that doesn't come before also, us we're not going to uh, know there are also right? our road races that go through Co town that have nothing to do with the lions club right. that i don't right. even hear about yeah this i just signed this right yes okay well, I mean, I think if, you know, between us, you know, the, the town side and if the Lions Club have can add something to their application, right, we can let Chief, Mike, saying, yes. let Chief Mike know what's mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe we can just make that, you know, something that's known and, you know, won't be tolerated on a go forward basis. Mm -hmm. If it happens again, you won't be allowed to use our facilities. I mean, we can't speak for the Lions Club, but, you know, sure seems like a simple ask to me. Yep. And it's not just the Lions Club. There's other... Mm -hmm. Right, it's not just the Lions Club. There's all kinds of other races. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> but I just know um, a lot of them congregate, start and finish at the pavilion. So that's that's the only reason I said the Lions Club. Okay, are you good? Yeah, thank okay. you. Thanks, Phil. Next, we have um, under Town Administrator's report the Billings Way proposal for land use. Yes, Harrison Bardwell, Bardwell Farm, mm -hmm. responded to the town's request for proposals, and. Uh, I, I forwarded his proposal to Agricultural Advisory Committee members John Pease and Betsy Speeder, and um, they um, highly recommend to the board that Mr. Bardwell's proposal be accepted. So as in the past, Mr. Bardwell has used that property for farming, and he assists the community assists the users of the community garden and he proposes to pay the town i believe it's 50 dollars 50 an acre yes per acre those are all done um, yeah so this yeah. would be for the next growing season with the option to um, renew an agreement with him for two additional years. That's good. I mean, I I know everybody's been happy with him. Mm -hmm. He's assisted the community gardens and everything's been working very nicely. And I'm glad that we have a three year type of setup this time because we were asking last time, why isn't this longer? So, so this is, but you said it's one year with a, one year with, with the a, option to for, renew for two additional years. Without rebidding it. Or correct. Re, with, okay. Correct. If right. he So it's if he chooses to continue to do it, we yes. would just be able to automatically renew. Yeah. I think it's great. Yeah. As well. well. I'll make a motion to accept the proposal as fourth uh, on Harrison Bardwell with the community, with the... The land proposal on Billings Way. Which would be the license for use of property on Billings Way in Hatfield. Second. 
A motion made and second. Any further discussion? No. Nope. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Little Meadow Road, Marlene. Yeah, the town's been um, contacted um, by William Burke, who has expressed interest in that property. It's about one acre. Um, you should have in your packet mm -hmm. the property uh, and a map. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's, it abuts the river, actually. Um, so I, I looked at the the property record and properties assessed at fifty one hundred dollars. Um, but you know, my first first question to the board is, is: this something that you would be interested in? The town doesn't use it, to the best of my knowledge, and I haven't talked with that person, with Mr. Berg directly. I understand that he has communicated with the assessor's office. So I don't know what he his, you know, the use of Mentioned. the property would be. So it's it's sort of in in a much larger parcel. Who own, do you know who owns the much larger parcel? I don't. I'm just curious. I can find that out. I yeah, can find I'm, that. I'm I just don't know, know who this owns time. the larger you see how, what I mean? It's like yes, in, I do. And yeah, then that is um, pretty I'm also large. like, well, I wonder why the town owned it in the first place. I don't know. Is that down near the wastewater treatment plant, Phil? Do you know? That's okay. probably that's probably Mr. Burke's property. That large parcel. The large so parcel is parcel. Bill, okay. That's what I'm. He's that's trying to, he's trying to. Okay. Get that piece involved. Yeah. Okay. I mean that. I get why he would want to do that. Mm. I'm just he curious does. why we. That's own a good it. question. I will why find out. Own it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I. I mean, I don't have a problem with it on this. Certainly on the surface, but I think we just need to have yeah, get a little bit more information. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I would like a little more info. Can I hang on? Okay. I will okay. get that for you. And then Marlene, you had opioid crisis funding. Yes. Update. So we had had a brief discussion a couple of meetings back and um, I had stated at that at that meeting that um, my understanding from the Department of Revenue, the funds automatically go into the general fund unless the town votes to appropriate the funds for a specific purpose. The police chief and Board of Health have expressed interest in using funds to educate the community and, and provide services. So the total amount of, of funds is $27,741.80. And as of just last week, we have received all payments. Um, initially, they had talked about you know spreading them out over several years. The distribution of funds today is, well, was 18,344 from J and J. Johnson and Johnson, mm -hmm. and ninety three hundred ninety seven dollars and sixty five cents, totaling the twenty seven thousand seven forty one eighty. So that is the amount that was allocated to Hatfield, and we have received <coughs> all the money. I'm proposing that we add a an art. The board adds an article on the annual town meeting warrant to appropriate the funds, and an account would be set up for for using those funds. Has any education. of it been expended? None. We, we can't. We, we can't. It'll just either close out to the general fund or if we appropriate the money, for, then we can spend it. Right. The town has received it. Okay. Well, if we're going to appropriate it, I'd like to know exactly what they're going to do with it. Right. Yeah. Sure. I can, I, I've had conversations with the Board of Health and, and the police chief, but I can circle back with you as to specifics. I know it's for educational purposes. Yeah, I mean, I guess but I'm not, I don't know, know all the details. Means. That means. And does it have to be <coughs> expended by a certain date? Is this a one shot? Do you know? Uh, I don't know if it has to be expended by. Uh, I mean, we've a got the. We date. actually have the money, right? Money in hand. We do. So, so that's a good. Checks thing. have been <coughs> received. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, but it would be nice again, to know more the plan. information yeah. about that. So. I think it's fine that obviously of education. What, what is, you know, yeah, what I mean, that's mean? yeah. What, what, yeah, that's exactly what is that. Mm-hmm. Right. <coughs> Set on that one? Yes. 
So um, topic eight is the proposed Connecticut River bikeway. Yes. Um, so Rich Abbott um, from the Open Space Committee has sent us a letter um, asking that we move ahead on the proposed trail. Yes. Uh, Northampton, City of Northampton, Wayne Fiden right. is interested in, in knowing whether the board... But Wayne is not... Wayne is retired, right? Uh, he, he retired, but he's worked out an arrangement with the City of Northampton. He's staying on to uh, assist with this project. Okay. Um, so this is the... We're talking about the um, proposed Connecticut River bike way that would um, begin a river run and end um, over by Elmport, um, just so people know what it is we're talking about. And, and there was a hearing back in October? Yes. September? Mm -hmm. um, October. Uh, about that. Um, and actually, there was a lot of people there voicing their support mm. for this. Um, I, I, I honestly really have not made up my mind of, on how I really feel about this, but is there some reason he needs a decision right now? Doesn't well, seem like it is. I think he's asking to bring this up to a vote. If if the committee's undecided or the board's undecided, it says this should be brought up to a vote. What bothers me right now is a lot of people have approached me against this project. And what sort of bothers me is after our meeting, a lot of concerns were expressed and Northampton sort of saying, yeah, so what? Uh, if you don't want it, we're still gonna build it and we'll just stop short. But I think it should be up to the people in town to make a vote on it as far as I'm concerned, because there is opposition to this project. I would agree. I, I, think, I think this is another one of those um, town-wide things that, that all the residents should have input, not just the three of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I certainly think that, and, and there was good discussion on it at the hearing, but yeah. but I think a lot more people have come up to you afterwards. I, I've had some naysayers. I've also had a lot of positive you know, people that want wanted to move forward. So I think it's only fair that the town get to have that discussion at, at town meeting. Right. Um, so I I guess if, if we're if we're not going to vote as as a board on it, I would suggest we certainly move it forward and let Northampton know that we're bringing it to town mm -hmm. to let town meeting. So that would be my that would be my recommendation, by the way. I'm fine with that. And there'll be a lot more discussion prior to town meeting, of right. course, yeah, which is important so everybody can get the facts. And that's where I think it should be on the town floor for discussion. Yep. So it can be decided. Right. Agreed. Okay, I will notify Northampton yep. and the Open Space Committee as well. And just to be clear, Ted's point, Northampton said that they were probably going to move forward regardless and then mm -hmm. just just stop short of the Northampton line. And what this trail is uh, looking to do is have Hatfield, uh, part of it being Hatfield, which would be approximately 700 feet, if I'm not mistaken. That would be the Hatfield portion of right. this and also, entire trail. Also, the letter says that the town vote will not affect this project. If if Hatfield yes, decides agreed. to vote for it, it doesn't it doesn't affect the project. Agreed. So, I just so people knew the distance. The distance to right. Hatfield. Right. Right. Well, it would still come. It would still end, but it would end. It would. It would not end on Elm Court or in right. Hatfield. It would be a third of a mile prior. It would be at the Northampton line. Right. That's where it would end. Okay. We just need to make sure that, you know, people have all that information. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Okay, we are moving right along here. Is everybody, you're good with that? Yep, Everybody's I'm good. good with that. Um, Thank you. So next we're joined by the Finance Committee tonight. It is a joint meeting if you guys want to hey, come up and take your official seats. Um, and this is to discuss um, the FY24 financial forecast and guidance. It, take five. You, you want to, yeah, you want to take five minute break? No, no. So we can do that. Let them settle in.
We're joined tonight having a joint meeting with the Finance Committee um, to discuss the um, FY 2024 financial forecast and guidance. It's just about time that we start this process over again. And then we will additionally have some discussions around the fire and ambulance department um, and operating costs and potential increases to those operating costs. So um, did you guys want to start with the getting sort of getting ready for the process? Uh, yeah, if we could start with um, just doing some housekeeping, we need some minutes to be approved. Sure. Um, so we have... There he is, there he is. <laughs> just in time. So do we have the minutes from um, the April 25th meeting? Nope. Oh, good. I, I would make a motion to approve the minutes as presented for April 25th. I would second that. And then I'll move to approve the minutes of July 12th. I'll second that. That's for discussion. Oh, is there any discussion? <laughs> and all in favor say aye. 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 Now to approve the August 23rd minutes. And I'll second that. Any discussion? Yep. And all in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. okay. That's all set. Um, so I don't know how you wanted to start. Well, I mean, we're if we're talking about the um, the financial forecast and the guidance. I mean, we, we, we normally have this discussion. We talk about asking our departments for, you know, their budgets and the time frame and when we're going to start working on, on all of that so that department heads have a sense of when we're going to need all the information. And um, so I don't know if you guys have laid out a plan for what you want around all of that or we haven't met yet. since August. We have not met. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no so, just, so Marlene has a, you know. So a couple of months ago, maybe close to a couple of months ago, um, the budget form was sent out to all the departments and asked them to, you know, give careful consideration over the next couple of months as to, you know, potential increases that will impact their budget, not just for the next fiscal year, but even the following years, um, you know, maybe you know, two years out. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because you know we had discussions back um, during the the previous uh, budget meetings that um, we won't be expecting to see um, the availability of free cash that we've seen in the last couple of years. And you know, although free cash really, you know, some free cash has been used for one-time costs in uh, the operating budget, um, and, and surely we used free cash for capital projects. Um, but I, I do anticipate that next year is going to be a tight year. Um, I have a meeting tomorrow with the accountant in the treasurer's office, and we'll be submitting, hopefully submitting the recap to DOR the end of this week. Um, I was hoping that maybe I might have a preliminary figure for free cash, but I don't yet. Um, so hopefully by the end of the week. So anyway, that, that communication with the departments was, you know, to, to start really thinking about their, their operating costs. And, you know, that, that gives them the opportunity to get in touch with vendors that um, they use and, and inquire about um, cost increases. So um, they're still waiting, though, for guidance from the select board and, and finance committee. And Diane and I have had, you know, a brief conversation. You know, the message to departments for many years has been, you know, level fund, level fund. And um, I, I think, you know, we need to, 
there, there's going to be cost increases that departments cannot avoid, and and then some departments may not see increases. So I think you're you're looking at, you know, having to increase some budgets and and not others. We had we had a discussion in the spring about we knew we used a lot of one time money, mm -hmm. um, free cash for for budget purposes and. You know, we we talked about it last spring. The need, the potential need going forward for needing more money, a budgetary override of some sorts to um, going forward. And I know at that time we talked about with the, with you guys about you know looking forward to that this fall and or or talk you know start those discussions early have you guys had any discussions on this going forward um I, I mean i think we all sort of had the feeling that there were certain departments that we were we were going to have some you know different things might look differently different in certain departments the school department we're talking about our emergency services departments mm -hmm. um you know, those, those, we, we very well may need to go and ask for an override um, to be able to fund things that people need. Um, so we need to be prepared to have that conversation, have all the information so that, you know, townspeople know what, why we're asking, what we're asking for, and, and, um, you know, hopefully support the services that they want to see in town. Has it I mean, in, in fairness, I, I know we have talked about level funding in the past, but hasn't the conversation really been more than that, like the request? I mean, it seems to me like over the last several years, we have asked exactly that question, which is submit a level funded budget and then tell us the things that you're going to need beyond that. You Correct. know, like, so, I mean, I don't know that we need to do anything different than that, really, but I mean... I guess I guess I don't necessarily want to encourage people just to say submit a budget with a five percent increase if you don't need the five if you don't need that mm, you know that's true. like what are the things that are needed um, right. you know as specifically as we can as mm -hmm. can be addressed because I think a lot of the a lot of the general costs are not always in department line items anyway you know so like they they are in a line item but. Like insurance, if insurance oh, goes okay. up, I every department yes. doesn't have to budget for that. Right. If the cost of fuel goes up, every department doesn't budget for that. That's just under the fuel line item. Right. So those things are accounted for mm -hmm. in a different way. So mm -hmm. we don't really need to know about sort of mostly about like general inflation kind of issues. We need to know more about like service specific service issues, right? That are going to come up. Um, I think what, what Marlene and I were, were discussing is that that whole first part of present a level fund, funded budget first and mm -hmm. then tell us what you need. It's like the whole first part just seems a little unnecessary. We know what the level of funded budget looks yeah. like. It's the same as last year. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just semantics, right. I think, really. That's true. And, 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 and I would interject that we do – need to remember is some of that budget that we put together last year, we did use free cash to fund some of that. And we did use ARPA funds to fund some of that. And so <laughs> even a level funded budget, right? I, mean, I would just personally say my own opinion, if you're going to say, if you're not going to say submit a level funded budget, which is fine, if you're going to say submit a budget the budget that reflects the services that you need we need then i think we need to get a narrative with that mm -hmm. that describes mm -hmm. how it's different from last year like or cuz cuz if you just submit a budget you know what i mean like with salaries and expenses yeah. and it's different than last year i don't know what that's going to be different you well, know we, and we do usually sit yeah. down with everybody yeah. to go to go through it so that we understand if there's increases with, Right. You know what's triggering those. Right. You know that's. Um, I think that's an wanna, exercise. You know, it'd be good to have a narrative that describes the difference between, like, say, oh, well, the cost of X went up fifty percent. You know, like if if Phil comes in and says, well, the cost of fuel went up X percent, so that's in this line, or the cost of electricity 
like all those things are unavoidable versus we're adding, you know, three new employees of the water department or whatever, you know, like I, right. I think we just need to have a highlights of what's just costs went up and what's new services. Yeah. And I mean, we, you know, we, we have had the benefit of some, some, other funds that we, we won't have ARPA funding and things like that. And, yeah. and we were able to get, take a lot of things off of the capital plan with those. Like there, you know, we made a lot of progress um, yeah. over the last couple of years, but I think we all knew going into this year that things would be tightening up. Um, and so I think the guidance needs to be that, you know, the, the budgets will be tight, but we do want to know, you know, what department heads really need to provide the services that townspeople have come to expect. And then we, we meet with all of them. So all of that can be discussed um, and sort of fleshed out as we meet with them. Do you think we need to move our timeline up a little, mm -hmm. do some of this earlier so mm -hmm. that we know, I mean, we know in advance. So say we need to know by, I'm going to throw out a date of like March 1st, we kind of, and I know we don't have, we have kind of some rough numbers. So that gives us an idea like, okay, we're not going to have <laughs> enough money to do this and we need to do something, whether it's an override or, or whatever, or maybe by March 1st, we find out hey, we're going to be okay, but whatever. It's just a suggestion. Yeah. I, I don't know what anybody else thinks, but that's that's one of my thoughts. Yeah, I mean, because ideally, if we're going to have to ask for an override for any of our departments, it would be ideal to do it at town election. Absolutely. Well, yeah, we, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you need, I mean, you need to know, we need to know exactly what it means. Right. Right. We don't know, mm -hmm. we don't know exactly what it means like to what we're exactly asking for right like specifically yeah if we're like going to ask hard if we're not right people need to know exactly what they're going to get for yeah. and right. and what they could potentially lose <laughs> if if overrides aren't passed so. right okay and I, and I know it's semantics but do we call it a level funded budget we're looking for or a level services budget i think it's in level services Local services yeah. makes more sense. Well, if we're yeah. trying to get that understanding of what we really need in increases, then it would be level services level because service. a level funded would mean they'd have to probably cut things. They would mm -hmm. cut things. Oh, what? Mm -hmm. Abs yeah, absolutely. Right. We'd have to. Yeah. Because so level services would give us a little bit more accurate. Mm -hmm. And then beyond that, you know, level services and for certain departments, you know. Right. Maybe. And if there's a if a department has a need outside of level services, they should present that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Or on the other hand, if they find some savings that they can make, knowing <laughs> that it's going to be a tight budget, yeah. that would be great. You know, there's always that. So is the proposal, would we propose to the different department heads to work on this sooner rather than later? And we'd like to have the information by whatever date we want to have the information so we can start having those meetings. Okay. And I guess I would, I would suggest what, what appears to maybe make sense is the smaller departments might be easier to put a budget together. Mm -hmm. Maybe not, but mm -hmm. you would think. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we can sort of run through those first this, right. you know and then as we get to dpw and the schools and the emergency services some of the larger ones that you mm -hmm. know, th those would probably be down the road a little bit beyond yeah. those smaller yeah. departments but we could so. we should start in january that's no, what i mean I was, if they've been gonna, given they've already yeah, been given. i was going to suggest in january if <laughs> we go through this no, every no, no. year right should, let's just <laughs> right, get yeah. a jump you on start it. the process yeah let's yeah, start in january and particularly right. if you are looking at overrides then you know how are those questions going to be presented because doesn't right. lydia need like she, 60 days 30 she needs to time. know um early april i believe yeah, yeah i was going to say know. do you think we could get that information from lydia backed up yes sort of when decisions mm -hmm. would have to be made so that yeah we can right um sure. have it all together so Marlene, yeah. when, when did you typically ask for a um, the deadline for from department heads? I did not indicate oh. a deadline at the time, just that, you know, asking that they 
they take the next couple of months to, you know, really. I mean, before this year, what, what was oh, oh, prior? Um, I think it was the end of January budgets were due. Oh. Yeah, I think it was the end so of January. Is it sometime in June? Bob? In the past that I've been here, we've always been asked to turn in our operating budget by December 15th. Yes. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I mean, because if we could assemble them all by then and then start the discussions in January. Yeah, absolutely. Better, I would so. say, yeah, December if we're going to start okay. in January. But. No Michael, did you have something? Yeah, just thinking ahead, um, I was wondering, actually thinking back to the annual town meetings well back in May, um, has anyone thought about talking with the school committee? about the school department's ability to generate more revenue for the community. Um, we, we talked about that briefly at the annual town meeting. You know, we're seeing a decline in enrollment. We're seeing a, a decline in, in uh, school choice students coming in. And obviously, that's impacting the, the, uh, the, the revenue of the community. And we discussed about you know, the issue of how we could make the school department more attractive such that it's it's generating more revenue for the community, at least stabilizing the loss of revenue, and perhaps at some point in the future generating more revenue. I'm just wondering whether we should start that kind of conversation with them now. What, what kind of investment would the school department need in order to make it more attractive such that it's generating more revenue for the community? Because every year, you know, we were talking about expenses, but, we, you know, how about revenue sources? Uh, how about, you know, some, not necessarily out of the box things, but we could generate more revenue. <coughs> we could help solve a lot of our problems. And we, I know we did talk briefly about the school department's ability to generate more revenue for the community. Um, you know, if you can get 50 more school choice students, you're looking at a quarter million dollars more in revenue for the community. Uh, that's a lot of money. And we certainly have the capacity to take that on in the school department. But we have to be able to attract those students as well. Um, just a, a thought. Mm -hmm. I would anticipate that the school is uh, yeah. looking into this. Yeah. And, yeah. And, you know, there's. I think both yeah. from a sort of a programming standpoint and a physical standpoint of the school itself, right? Some improvements that could be made. And and I, I think that that is something the school is sure, working right. on. And, and, oh. You know, if the town could be convinced that if we spend X more and go through a, an override for that money, it will generate this amount of money coming forward over the next five to 10 years in additional revenue, the community might very well be accepting of, of an override. Um, well, I think if any override is to take place, it has got to spell out exactly yeah. what towns people are going to get for the additional funding they're being asked for by every department that wants the money. That's the only mm -hmm. way it's going to work. And I don't disagree with what you're saying, Mike. Right. But, it, you know, what are we going to get? What are we all going to get for the added money that we're going to raise our taxes by to, to support you? What are we going to get back? Right. Right. It just can't be. We need more money. Oh, no. I don't For what? Can show them that there's a revenue stream <laughs> yeah. coming. Well, that, right. we, or we, doesn't even have to be a revenue stream as much as it's got to be a services that we're going to offer stream. Right. This this is what you're going to get for the additional fund. If we can get revenue, great. Um, but right, it, it's got to be a. What are we going to get? What what what's the bang for the buck? Well, it's right? going to be hard to know, you know, up front because you're going to have to offer the thing before you attract the people. Yes. It's not, you know. Well, not, that's how it should no be. Quid pro quo. You, can do, you can do that pro forma business plan. Yes. Right. Based on their experience and working with them and saying, right. okay, you know, if we invest half a million dollars more in the school department, we can provide X, Y, and Z additional attractiveness in terms of facilities and programming. And, you know, our expectation would be that we would be more, one of the more attractive school systems in the area again. Like we, we will start to bring in more revenue with more school choice students. Yep. To me, that's a that's a no brainer if we can show that to the community. Um, anyway, just a thought. It's a good no. one. 
It's still an unknown entity though, right? You can offer the programs and you can spread the word and you can, you know, get the commercials out and all that. But until the kids walk through the door, you, you don't really know if you're going to get that return on the investment. But what's been happening yeah. right now over the years is that the school department's revenue has been dropping, and you know that. Mm -hmm. The ability of the school department, the, the services of the and programming of the school department have been being reduced as a result of they're not being able to afford. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a dub. Yeah, I get yeah. it. Yeah. And so as a result, the number of enrollees from school choice has dropped. Right. And so we need to reverse that pattern. Otherwise, I, I, you know what's at risk. I, I think in, in, you know, there, there may be other factors involved. I, mean, I, I haven't pulled up the spreadsheet in a while, but I know off the top of my head kind of where people are coming from. Um, and so, like, you know, I, I the other night I was over at the new uh, East Hampton uh, K through 8 school which is a giant, gorgeous, brand new facility. So, you know, are we going to attract as many people as we used to from places like that that just built brand new schools that had old schools prior, you know? So there, I think there's some other things in play here, too, that <clears throat> there might not just be as many available school choice people to, to attract right. um, as there were at one time, you know, but... Even retaining our own students, that would be... Step right. in the right direction. Right. But anyway. Thanks, Mike. Anyway. Okay. Are you guys ready to, is that good? Are you ready to move on to the discussion about the fire and ambulance department? Or did, was there more you wanted to talk about in terms of process? Well, I think we're good. So we, we would ask Marlene to get the full uh, Up the letter, letter and draft the letter. By Christmas or I'll January draft the letter, 1st yeah. or, you know, I'll whatever. work on that and then, then send it to Diane. Yeah, maybe and we should Diane's just... Yeah. No, later than January. For, First for meeting in date. January, have a joint meeting and mm -hmm. take a look at what we have, at least preliminarily. Yep. And mm -hmm. okay. Go for the little get, ones, get them I get think, it done. Yeah. Get it going. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, Bob, did you want to come up to the mic? Keith. Go ahead. So this is, I believe this discussion or my, my intention of this discussion tonight is just about moving forward to continue with FY23 um, to hire an additional full-time firefighter EMT basic. Um, during the FY23 budget discussion, I brought it up on several different occasions that I realistically will have to bring up and potentially hire a full-time basic and a full-time medic, but I would certainly try my best to fill them as per diem. I found the YouTube videos and everything that I said it five or six times during the, the couple of months. Um, I did try it. I made it through July, August, and September, and we were still having open shifts. So I was trying to do what I said I would do and what was asked of me, and it wasn't really working. When you have per diem, you can't force them to work. Um, they're, they're at will employees. If they choose to not take a shift, they're not going to take a shift which has then left us with some shifts or quite a few shifts ultimately that have gone unstaffed. Obviously it means unstaffed shifts, we're missing calls or we're sending one person, mutual aid's coming in, it's loss in revenue. So I think everybody's well aware of, you know, kind of the, the detriment to the whole process of doing this. Um, I met with the select board back on October 26th. Um, I, had, I had posted for a p person, I have the money in the budget for the position, um, the hangup seemed to be a little bit of the benefits. Um, it never made it to the budget, even though it was presented by the treasurer, $14,433 was presented from the treasurer's budget, but it never made it into the final that went to town meeting. Um, it was for three positions, and I believe the three were my two and the one DPW position. Um, so it, it didn't get there, um, but it doesn't negate the fact they need to hire somebody, so it's a matter of the money. Um, I spent the last month looking at my numbers um, and I had a conversation during the meeting on the 26th and then a couple of other conversations with the town administrator. Um, you know, the health insurance was probably the biggest number that seemed to kind of come into play. It's an unknown number really until you get to the end of the year, until people get their enrollment done during the budget process. Um, what I can tell you is that if, if 
it needs to come from some type of funding source at the end of the year if some of these lines were to come short i have the ability that i believe it's up to the finance and select board to transfer the money at the end of the year to cover a shortage in that line so i i was presented a problem and essentially i tried to come up with a solution to to fix it without having to take any money from finance reserve or go to any other funding source trying to fix it all in-house. Can I just pipe in? So we, we did have a talk about this and I had, I had a few concerns and I appreciate Bob and you know, we, we talked about this earlier, <coughs> Bob, when you weren't here, the, the work you've done around trying to be uh, innovative and aggressive with trying to um, make sure that these calls are always met. So we appreciate that. Um, my concern was that we, it wasn't in the budget for the benefits. I don't remember any discussion with the treasurer about that being in there whatsoever. Um, so I'm not sure why that was proposed to be in there. I don't remember that at all. I, I, I was concerned too, because so we, if, so Bob, tell me the hours that this shift would be. So with with adding another person, it would end up being the current full time firefighter EMT and the new person would work a alternating schedule. So they would each work two 16 hour shifts and then each would work two hour shifts, uh, two eight hour shifts in a week. So they would get their four. Each of them would have their 40 hours and that basically it takes it down. So instead of me currently having to try to fill nine basic shifts, it's going to drop it down to four basic shifts per week. Um, so, so it's a lot when, easier to try to fill that because I do generally fill the, that amount every week, but trying to fill nine is difficult. Okay. So if, if this full-time position is created, my, one of my concerns was that this extra money doesn't exist next year, right? So we, I was currently concerned not. about it doesn't currently exist. So it would have to be built into the budget process. And we know that that would probably be one of the line items mm -hmm. we're talking about that could trigger an override. Sure. So then you're talking about if that is unsuccessful, um, you'd now be laying someone off at the end of June and then the town pays unemployment costs on it. So that was a concern of mine. And mm -hmm. then also Absolutely. that you, you're now putting one person on that shift. <clears throat> In theory, you could still have the ambulance unable to roll if you don't have the second person to come in. So you're 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 putting one person, one full time person. It doesn't necessarily mean that during that shift, you still are relying on either a per diem or people like Carrie or Bob, um, who are coming in to make that ambulance actually be able to go. It's not exactly a guarantee that that ambulance can roll during that shift. Yeah, I I, I can't again working with the rest right. of per diem staff. I can't guarantee that the other half of that right. ambulance crew will 100% be staffed every time. Right. Um, but I could tell you that the numbers show that we staff it more we, it, with one person already in the building, we would still already be covering more calls than we do. In the, in the month since this <clears throat> holdup kind of has been going on for the month of November, I could tell you that during the times that we would normally be hiring or, and having staff on, we've missed seven ambulance calls and four out of the seven, there was one person in the station that took that other half, where if I had had the full-time person on shift, now we would have covered that call. Right. Which then in turn, those ambulance calls get answered. And then in, ter in turn, it actually covers almost the entire month's salary for that one person on four ambulance calls in revenue. So there's that, there's always that, where's the revenue and what, what is you, how are you funding it? So that's around the break even point is about four. Every ambulance call we average, you say that it's a $700 collection. Yeah. And then based off of what we currently pay, essentially it would pay for one in one and two thirds pay periods for that individual, just those four calls. $2,800. Mm -hmm. So my, my recollection <clears throat> last spring was that it was going to be per diem only. I do not recall. I'm not going to argue. I'm just telling you my recollection. My other recollection is that 
this fall, the plan was that there would be a committee that would be put together that would look at this, that would look at call volume, that the reason we used free cash ARPA funds was so that we could get through this year, we could figure out, or at least the calendar year and figure out where we were. And I guess my question is, is that committee been put together? Do we have numbers to look at? Um, we, we don't have any, I don't have any call numbers um, really to look at. Um, I like to see all of that. Um, and no, and I mentioned, we, we, we did talk about this briefly at the beginning. I think that this is a, a job that honestly warrants hiring a consultant. I'm not normally in favor of consultants, but I, I wanna make sure we get this right. And I want a, a consultant to look at all of our options because we do have other options. And I don't, you know, people need to be given all the facts so that they can decide. Um, you know, what, what this will look like. And I, I do think that it, it warrants, um, you know, really an outside consultant looking at it. I think for the short term, Daryl, I, I agree with you that last spring, I remember it being per diem. And, and Bob and I have discussed this and, and yeah, I, I don't, you know, it doesn't, it's not that it doesn't matter, but at this point, what matters is if all the per diems were coming in when called or toned, we wouldn't be having this conversation right, right now about right. a full-time employee. So I think all of us were under the impression, all of us, I probably you too, Bob, that if we had a, a list of EMTs that could, you know, do per diem, we'd, we'd be all set for those shifts. That hasn't come to fruition exactly how any of us see it, which mm -hmm. is why we're now at the hire a full-time person so you know somebody's going to be there, right? Did I... Pretty much sum that up correctly. There's a lot of people on the list, but they're just not taking. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you can have a hundred people on the list, but if they don't show up, you we know. could be coming into a time frame when it's even harder because I think a lot of those were students, right? Uh, a not good local. chunk of them, and a lot of them haven't even worked during the school year. So, so and so now they're all going to be heading back to, you know, because we. I know from the sheets there were a lot of people mm -hmm. from other. Yes. Parts of the state. Yes. Um, so my point is the challenges might be getting a little bigger over the maybe second half of December and into Absolutely. January even. And then essentially the first weekend in May. It, it's over. We're done then yeah. for another two months. So even in the next seven months. That were students, right? Correct. And some were. I don't know what. Yes. Do you have an idea of the split? Um, I mean, I'm not. I'm just saying roughly. Honestly, it's, it's probably a, a 75, 20, 25 being students. Sure. Oh. But the rest all, you know, they work in other jobs. So they're working either a rotating schedule. So they're depending on when they're. We, you know, we have. Bob's been, as I said, been being very, um, you know, aggressive around trying to, to figure this out. Mm -hmm. We've been very supportive. Um, you know, trying to back it up with the, with the finances, but we still find ourselves in this, in this spot. And, and that's, so, you know, I just want to make sure that we are putting together the best possible plan moving forward so that response is reliable. And I have to say there's, you know, Carrie and Bob are both in this room. They're doing a lot of the responses, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we rely on them heavily and they're excellent. You know, we've been getting letters from people about how much they support the ambulance and how much, um, you know, they appreciate the ambulance and we couldn't agree more. Right. Um, and we have a thousand percent faith in that, but we, we it, you guys can't just, you can't do it all. You can't do it all. So what happened so, to the consultant or the committee? Well, I or... just suggested that tonight. The, I, you know, I, I'm not sure a committee is really the, the way to go. I think that this is, you know, as I was mentioning before, if, if we, and, and Bob said, you know, that like a full-time, full-time would be what, 10, 9, 10 people? Oh, to go to, you know, that, that right. dream scenario? Yeah, you, you would probably be looking at uh, eight people. Essentially, yeah. To yeah, so that, because people would have to rotate it, yeah. so you'd have your two, your, yeah, because you'd have to cover weekends and all right. of that. 
that, and I mean, a, because deciding what shifts to cover and what shifts not to cover then leaves you again with the problem of there's times during the day or overnight where there is no coverage. Well, that that's the beauty of putting people in is that now somebody's there to cover the shifts right. and then it becomes by getting to this 16 hours a day, it takes some of the pressure off of the current call EMTs. So they're not feeling like they're going out weekday or weekend days every night of the week and then still having to do an overnight on right. call like we do. It it gets old rather quick that you're just I'm you're, sure. you're constantly, constantly, constantly running out the door. So that would alleviate, it would alleviate that. some of the the call folks for feeling stressed that, well, I already did three calls today and now I have to go out at 2 a.m. If they don't have to do those other calls because we have actual staff, now the call folks, oh yeah, I, I'll, I can get up no problem in the middle of the night and go and handle those calls and we're gonna miss you know, maybe 10 or 15 a year as opposed to what we do now. You know, as I said, like the creating the position is as long as we can make it so that we're not uh, it, you know, uh, the, again, the budget process is going to be really important here because mm -hmm. you have to, we have to put together what exactly you're looking for right. and do it early enough so that if, because honestly, Bob, they're to fund some of this stuff, we're going to have to go to override. Right. I'm, on, I'm only looking for, to finish the next seven months. I know that the know FY24 that, you, is you know a very we, huge, that huge that could trigger an unemployment situation if, Correct. if we're not yeah. having a plan or beyond that. So so I think to Daryl's to answer Daryl's question, I think we have two questions before us tonight. One is what Bob just said to finish off the year, which I, I would suggest we have the funds for that because we put that in the budget out of the hundred and eighty thousand dollars in free cash to hire an employee for the remainder of this year. And because they haven't and then the other question is to have and then the other thing, Daryl, is we do want to have a consultant, a committee, something, but it isn't about this one top it's not about that position it's, right. about it's about the, the department as, as a whole. whole so that is going to be happening but i think that bob's on here tonight to discuss this right. position because when he came before the board we all said the same thing we thought it was per diem anyways here we are would and that's we thought that the finance committee should be part of that conversation if we're hiring an employee and paying them benefits with the potential to then have the position not funded yeah well, really all we're talking here that that's what, so that's what tonight's about yeah, really all we're talking about is the benefits. And the if, salary's already yeah, there. And right. Bob, you said something right. tonight. If 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 a number of those per diem shifts have gone unfilled, then you could potentially have money in the budget to offset the I'm sure that's benefits. Yes. Right. Yeah. Because of the way when I built the budget for the new fiscal year for FY23, I built it for all the hours that needed to be covered. And then also on top of that, there was money put in for overtime for, because again, I built it for three full-time positions, counting Ricky that we have, backfilling people's vacations, a little bit of overtime and things like that. So that's where, if you looked at the budget last year, it was 161,000 was the actual shifts and the additional 19,000, right. I forget the number, was basically the overtime, backfilling and so forth. Because we haven't already filled a lot of these shifts, we have money. money we will there. have money left over. Right, right. right. That's no what I was. What. I ran the numbers today up, right up until today. And there would be money available to be transferred at the end of the fiscal year if it's needed. Absolutely. I would I would say I, comfortably, I could say that we would be able to, or you folks would be able to make the decision to transfer up to $12,000 to cover expenses. And I know people are going to say, well, how do you have that much money left? Well, it's you mean you asked games. too much. It's because we didn't cover shifts. Yeah. That's the only reason why. Yeah. I didn't inflate the budget. No, no, no. It was just that Nobody, we know that. We know that. That's why I so, asked because the per diem <laughs> shifts weren't. Yes. Some of them weren't. That was another contract. Care. Service I run. You can't hire people. Yeah. Can you also so just point out because he and I discussed these numbers this morning, <clears> actually, <throat> as being the assistant manager to the ambulance. Like, we do just a lot of talking besides at home, obviously. <laughs> we do this every morning in the office. And he also can fill the, per, the paramedics shift too with the money that's left with there's still being leftover money for benefits for both positions. So we, we ran the numbers to make sure that if it was to fill both positions for the next six months, then that covers even more shifts and 16 hours a day of coverage, seven days a week. Okay. Are we, so are we talking about two? For no, two I'm just so, saying. So, so it, it was originally because it, and I know everybody, nobody remembers the conversation, but it did happen. I, I can promise you I did not lie about it. 
it was to fill a firefighter EMT and a firefighter paramedic full time, but we would try to do it as per diem because that was the request. So we are to that point where I'm filling a few of the, I'm filling paramedic shifts, but they become hard. There's not as many of us in the entire state right now. So it's hard and everybody's working another job because they're, this isn't a full time. So there is the potential that not now, probably January, because I'm going to lose one of my paramedics because they're not recertifying. Well, actually, probably losing two because one of them is moving out of town most likely. There's the potential for a short term, again, to hire it, which is where I have the money in the budget to help offset those costs. A second, another person we're talking about. Correct. At, at the paramedic level, Correct. full time on, that would have to be a discussion later. I would rather do it all now. So in case I have to do it come January or early February, I can, you know, I, I'm basically giving you the, hopefully I'm giving you the answer that I'm, I have the funds to help cover those potential overage costs at the end of the fiscal year. I have a question though. Uh, so you say you, you weren't able to cover all the shifts with the per diem. Does that mean that the revenue that you anticipated getting with all of those calls is short as well. I'm not even, because of the way that the money was appropriated last year or earlier this year, excuse me, I'm only running based off of the uh, free cash number mm -hmm. that was given. That does okay. not include right. actual ambulance revenue so this that isn't we build even in. Part of that. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. No, that's, that's there. Ultimately, there is even more money on that side beyond okay. that if needed. Okay. Basically, the ambulance surplus. So, so what's your call volume this year? Uh, as of 300 20 minutes ago, that one was 360. 369. Yeah. So of the 369 roughly, how many, how many calls has, have you been able to do? So we have to, <clears throat> excuse me, Hatfield has done 258 transports. And 109 or no transports, but that's we covered the call. That's lift assists or just a straight up refusal yeah, yeah, or no, whatever no. the case may be. So when we break down the numbers, Hatfield has actually covered 78 to date. We have covered 78% of the ambulance calls for the entire town for the are, year. Are some of those 109 where you went, but another ambulance transported? No, that would be strictly we went full crew, but they just needed help. There was just up. a reason. Yeah. They just went to. Right. Okay. Oh, or they just refuse, yeah. you know, just car refused. accident, yeah. get away yeah. from me. I'm not going with you. Right. Okay. They sign a refusal and we return. So, um, so that's, that's pretty much where we're at on the ambulance. But those numbers are, I mean, if you're losing per diem people, the problem, the problem seems to be that you won't continue to be able to cover 78% of the shifts likely going. The current status, the reason why this number is even as high of calls that we have missed is because of not having the staffing yeah. ultimately. Like it's, it was a process as we started in March, started onboarding people and it's just, it's continuous. I mean, the, the actual call ambulance side is running very thin right now. So that's where it's putting a lot of that extra stress. If you don't have shift coverage, you're relying on a small number of people or it ends up being that a mutual aid comes in. And every time that happens, patients are waiting, you know, upwards of 10 to 12 minutes and what happens yeah, i mean we're losing our first responders being able to go on calls too yeah there's legis there's currently up. legislation that we've been using firefighters to cross staff the ambulance for about 18 19 months now um there's legislation in front of the house right now that it may pass in march um and we're going to lose that ability so that would really really hurt us <laughs> may pass in march that seems kind that's, of early that's, to that's get the plan legislation passed, but so that means, so then someone like Luke can go with you or Bob? Currently, currently, yes. Currently, currently, yes. It won't happen. Alan goes to the two of them are get up in the middle of the night on a regular basis. With yeah, them. so these these are actually two of my overnight on call guys that between the two of them, they're covering at least three to four nights a week with one of the EMTs to, to help out. And we, I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, well, we do too. I have, I have, Luke, did you have something you wanted to say? Yeah, I just think that one of the big takeaways from this is that since we were able to input the um, the per diem shifts, that the percentage of calls that we've been able to cover has increased 
exponentially. And now that we're getting into the holiday season, students moving back, like you pointed out, Diana, that we potentially would not be able to cover as many of those shifts. So you would see that response rate and that ambulance availability start to decline, which is why we <coughs> want to institute this, this other position so that we can keep the higher level of service that we're now offering. Um, if you look at the numbers from where the ambulance was a few years ago to what it's doing now, which Bob and our other full-time department member, uh, Ricky Silberto, they've done a fantastic job. They have all the numbers and all the metrics, like any, any graph you want, any time of day, like all based on time of day. Um, yeah, that's everything. what I'd like to see. I mean, yeah, we, that was all sent all to there. you guys a couple weeks ago. It's, I, it's, I it's all there and it definitely takes some time to go through it all, but my point I would just like to bring up is that the ambulance, the level of ambulance service has grown since we've been able to put these positions into effect. And we just want to make sure that that ambulance service stays at a high level, which is why we're looking for this position. Um, and clearly it's that the money's there to be able to fund it. Um, and it's my personal opinion that it should be funded. And I don't think that anyone in the town would regret doing that. If I can just for two seconds, at being the most senior person of the department currently, or I'm sorry, the second senior, because my brother beats me by two years because he was older. Um, but I'm 25 years in the department in February. And in 25 years, we have grown. Our call volume has grown. I mean, I started back when Daryl was still on as an EMT. And, you know, and Daryl, correct me if I'm wrong, but... I think you spoke back in the spring about we haven't seen a two and a half override for operations in probably 40 years in this town. The ambulance only or ever. No, no, never. Never. Okay. Never. So, and the ambulance you're, you're has right. been in service it's for never. 41 years. So, yeah. the fact that we've never seen it for operational needs and for what we're talking about, I don't think personally, as much as if you take what a lot of people always refer back to, is either our younger generations who may not be able to afford possibly living in Hatfield very well right now, or our older generation who are clearly on fixed incomes, wanting to see their taxes raised. I don't personally think, after 25 years of service here, that anybody is going to be upset seeing an animal show up into their driveway within two to five minutes of calling 911 instead of 10 to 15 minutes of calling 911. And I've been there as the only single EMT when you're taking care of a very sick person who needs that ambulance, and it is heartbreaking to be the only person there and not be able to just load them up and take them out the door and take them to the hospital where they need to be for whatever level of care they need versus having them sit there and wait and wait and wait and go, where is the ambulance? It seems like forever for five minutes. Well, it seems like an eternity for 10 to 15 minutes. And so that's, I mean, if we can do it, even if it, if it's six months, it's six months, but I would hope to, I would hope that every resident in this town would say yes to a two and a half override. If that's really the direction we have to go, to keep the service in town for ambulance, fire, police, because that's probably coming down the line soon. If it's any other department, DPW school, I don't really care if, if we can fund it and be able to do it to show the reasons of why the taxes need to happen. That's what we should be doing and looking forward to the next six months of conversation. I mean, it, it, it sucks overall, but it's what it needs to happen for everybody's safety, in my opinion. So, you know, oftentimes it's it's not until you have to make the call that you appreciate um, yeah. what what you and the fire and and police and, and, do. And, 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 I, I just want to be clear: we appreciate well, that. Oh, I mean, I, I know we went over we, this in the right, beginning of our and, meeting, and, and we did go over this in the Certainly. you know in and the I beginning. Of the meeting. Meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, other department, one hundred percent no, and it's easy to sit in the community and throw <laughs> stones. I said it. I don't normally post things on social media when it comes to politics stuff because it always gets me in trouble. But I said it the other day, don't throw stones at us sitting out in the field who are the ones who are offering up our time call, you know, all hours of the day because we've chosen to do that. Or for any of you that are sitting up there that choose to run and be elected because you know what? I've sat in the seats that you are in on the Board of Health side and it's not fun sitting on that side when you've got people on this side not telling total truths, not having all the information, whatever the case may be. And that's the problem with politics as we all know it. Right. But 
we as department members are well aware of the fact that you all support us and the residents support us. We just want, as department members, we want the best for our residents and the taxpayers. And, and, and exactly. And, and, but we also do, you sitting on this side of the system. table, have yeah. an obligation Absolutely. to make sure that mm -hmm. there are other, there are other options what those other options are and if townspeople want them or don't want them and right. what what they're that's we have to do that we have right. to do that we have to look at all of those options and that, that is our that is our responsibility to look at right. you know yeah. um you know so, so out, outsourcing to northampton or outsourcing to south county we're going to have presentations in about that um, and they will be able to speak to response times and all of that sort of stuff. That's what townspeople need to know before they can make a decision. Because personally, I like having ambulance in town. We like it. And as we've Diane all gotten said, used to it, we have to know what the cost is going to be and what the town is willing to pay. Because, and, and as Sean said, and where there may we need still a be narrative. Gaps, right? This is the beginning of a narrative. This is a good conversation to get everything out because if we go for the override, we then have a starting point here for that narrative of is a town ready for getting coverage and having good coverage or what the town wants to pay because the taxpayers in town are the ones that pay the bills. So we got to make sure this is what everything is. I mean, it's, it's, it's not pretty just us simple. in the room. It's, it's those that are going to come out to town meeting are going to make the decision. Yeah, I think, though, for the next seven months, it seems like we're we've committed to trying to figure out yeah. what 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 does it mean to answer an increased percentage of the calls compared to prior past years? And how are we, you know, like we're sort of down a road here um, and we're not putting very much at risk, especially if we have the money to cover the benefits. I'm willing to take the unemployment risk in a you know, in an, when the unemployment rate is three and a half percent and probably for EMTs way less than that, you know, I mean, it, you only have to pay the unemployment if the person doesn't get a job. Right. And I mean, hard to imagine you couldn't find a job given the experience we're having. Um, so I, mean, I feel like I'm willing to risk that to get an honest assessment of what the picture actually looks like when we're covering the shifts and how much revenue is coming in and what we can manage. I mean, we're already five and a half months or well, whatever down the road. The money's there. Yeah. Right. To back up, Sean, it, and I think I mentioned this in the, the October meeting with the three of you, it, to be able to give data so everybody understands, the residents and the eight of you, right now, it's basically going to be junk data. It's I, I'll be honest. Right. It's going to be bad data because there's not enough of the shifts covered. We know that there's calls missed. So there's not a good idea of, well, what would be the revenue? What's not the revenue and all those other little avenues. Well, and this is that. How many piece. calls there are. I mean, which is always variable right, too. But, I mean, you know, it's never going to be an exact science. Versus transports. How many, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of other variables that do kind of come into play. And this would be one way to try to fix that. So when we go to give data, you know, well, in March or April. More we would learn with X accurate. number of ships covered, right. you know, how much can we, how many of the calls can we answer as we plan to do yeah. rather than some less number because we can't get the staffing. To do. I, I, I agree. And it goes back to what I said a little while ago, which is our, our intention from the get-go last fiscal, you know, last budget season was that it would be covered with the MT. Well, obviously that's not happening the majority of the time. So I'm with you, Sean. I mean, I, I don't have a problem backing, the, you know, having the, the additional um, EMT added, but again, we we felt it was important that the finance committee be, be part of that process. I mean, I know we normally do the hiring, but I mean, this was kind of a big deal. Um, we felt uh, not only for now, but down the road, right? So, so we wanted everybody to be part of the process, or at least understand the process of where we're heading as we start putting the budgets together for for next fiscal. I agree. I agree that for the seven months, since the money's there, let's move ahead with that and try to get either a commission <laughs> or something to give us. And and as far as data, consultants that data, your data would be good. Even the missed calls is part of the data. It yeah, tells sure. us stuff. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I think 
most of you know me, I, my numbers are already run and ready for next year of what the actual tax implication would be. Because mm -hmm. I know what the projected revenue is and I've done it all. So it, it, I know the numbers floated around there and it's almost half of what most people think the number actually is. So We just have to get the right information for the townspeople so they can decide. Absolutely. Sean, can I ask, is your, when you say that you have no issues with, you know, taking on the fact of the unemployment part of this all, if it was to come to that come June, are you talking about both positions though, so that we could actually move forward with actually stopping the end of this even more? I mean, I'm just, I'm just, there? I mean, it just feels to me like it's fairly low risk given the climate that we're in. I mean, this isn't like the kind of time where I'm just trying to people say, well, can't get a job and, and you're going to get stuck. Yeah, you're going to get stuck. So you're asking for two full time? It would be the potential, not right today, but the potential, yes, that maybe by January or February 1st to revisit the paramedic because I am going to lose two of them. So if they're not, if I don't fill it with enough of the other paramedics that I have and I have hired a couple others, it may run into a similar situation. It'll be a shorter time frame ultimately. So if you're not. Yeah, all right. Let it go. Um, I don't think it really matters much. So the the two the two paramedics that you're losing are per diem. Correct. Okay. Yes. So this is part. So this is part of the. It's, Thanks, Carrie. It, they're college students and they're gone. And so all of my paramedics are all working full time somewhere else. Okay. One of them happens to be giving up their card as of December. They're no longer going to be an EMS. Oh. Um, and then the other one is one of actually our call folks, deputy, and he's most likely going to be out of town within the next five weeks. So, so it makes it makes it harder to, okay. to fill it. So I'm I'm still trying. You know, some of the medics are taking shifts. But it is a fact that we might be losing, you know, I know I'm losing one. The other one is still a little bit up in the air right now. So you just want the flexibility to be able to hire Correct. a if I have second to, person if if the per diems are really running low. Correct. To cover the shifts, we give them the high level of care and do what we do. And so with these two hires, Bob, just I, you might have mentioned it, but just so we say it out loud so the people here in the audience and the people at home understand it. We'd be looking to cover 16 hours a day. Correct. Five days a week? Seven. Seven days a week. Correct. Perfect. So, and it basically seven to four and four <clears throat> to mid 11. What, yeah, you know, so what it's it? seven A to 11 P is what okay. we'd end up covering. So the Monday through Friday is covered by me yep. as the medic during the day. Right. And then the rest will be covered by the other full time basic and then potentially the medic. <laughs> And right now, so we'd be going seven days a week, two shifts a day, or eight, six, you know, Correct. What do we have now? So that's currently what we've been trying to fill. But what, what do we have now with a, what do we have for for employees now? Just the first <laughs> shift? You know what I'm trying to say? I'm, it's I, just you and Ricky I, right It's just now. you and Ricky. Monday through Friday, it's just Ricky and I. Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday. Eight and to, then the to five. All the rest have been per One DMs. shift. Yes. And then everything, everything else has been the per diem. That's yes. that's the mm -hmm. point I wanted to get across. Correct. So by hiring these two people, you would now you would double the coverage. Yes. And you would add two days a week. Correct. Yeah. Currently, instead of trying to right. fill a total of eighteen shifts, I would actually only have to be filling eight shifts. Right. You're just replacing per diem people with non per diem people. Not entirely, but you just put per diem. Or, or, but you know you're gonna and and they'll ha and they'll be there. Right. So, right. That's the difference. You're hiring somebody versus waiting to see if somebody right. responds. <laughs> oh, hoping that they take oh, a shift. I'm back. I switched. Yeah. They, um... But it, it means that they're sitting at the station waiting for the patient to go off versus Correct. Currently Understood. Then travel or not be around or whatever. Yep. Yeah. So like here tonight is a perfect and, example and... of the question you asked about, you know, you could staff one person and you still miss the call. Well, I have one person staffed over there tonight, but because Obviously, we're here and there's still other people that are at home. We've now just in the hour and a half that I've been sitting in this room with you folks, we've now already covered two calls. And this is our third or fourth today. Mm -hmm. I lost track. I started at quarter of five. Right. Bob, does the state have a requirement for how many paramedics we need to have on our roster? They do not. 
there is a differential though in rate, right? So the so a paramedic is has a different rate than an EMT basic, yes. So that number has actually been in place for uh, 2017. Yeah, so we get more revenue. Yeah, if, if an ALS call goes out, typically you're collecting a higher revenue rate because now you're filling it out at a higher rate. Yeah. The, the 700 number is the average just because we have Medicare, Medicaid patients mm -hmm. collect a lower rate, but then others you collect a full. So it's just the whole insurance. <laughs> Trust me, I wish we collected everything that we actually build because this wouldn't even be a discussion right, right now, unfortunately. So tonight is just, just put it all together. Tonight would be looking to hire a full-time EMT. Correct. And, and grant permission to potentially hire a full-time paramedic after the first of the year, depending on how that plays out yes and a caveat and i know this is another thing that's been out there is that these people will be firefighters and emts so you are oh. getting dual role two for people for the same dollar figure out the door because we have to still staff both sides of that building back there the big red trix and the red box still got to staff them the red Big red yeah. the big so, red box goes on the fire calls. So we always have one EMT drive the ambulance, yes. and one person goes yep. in the fire truck with the call volunteers. So then it goes to every fire call. So that if there's a medical call, we can take that EMT off the fire truck. And they the they still stay in service the whole yeah. time. So the ambulance so. still is at least in service. You're not leaving it at the station on the staff. Personally, I do not have a problem moving forward with this. Um, again, I, even from our meeting back in October, I was feeling that we should allow that we should hire that second person or the person as an EMT, but did not want to move forward without finance committee being mm -hmm. part of that entire thing. So it's not like we were at least intentionally well, dragging our feet. I get, I, I mean, gonna, you know, um, <laughs> make sure it's looked at. Well, because then you don't want to see an increased budget when you submit your budget and, and not everybody understands where what happened to get there. So, and since the funding's already there for this year, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't seem to make uh, anything but sense to go ahead and move forward. So I, I don't know if we need a vote or you just a verbal right now. Um, no, plus I think it was nice to have the discussion in front of the town with yeah, the finance absolutely. committee, with everybody. So we have the right information out and not fake news. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think it had, it, it was, it was being presented like we didn't support your department right. or we didn't care about response to residents. Shouldn't have been totally not, media. not true. Well, in when, okay. I'm, I'm just going to say it. Mm -hmm. So when it comes out saying the board of selectmen finance committee are meeting to cut emergency medical services, that just isn't true. That never was true. It wasn't even close it to being the true. The ambulance service. I like mean, it, it just. It was very, it was too bad. It, I mean, we've seen other social things on social media that are, oh, been, you know, been. that are different. But I mean, that was just a flat out right. bunch of right. Right. malarkey. You, you saw our minutes. We didn't meet. We The last time we met was, was in August. Right. So shouldn't have been on social media. <laughs> Okay, so we don't need to vote because it's all in there. You're the higher fire. I don't know that. Yeah, I think this was kind of an FYI for our Only and and, and, and looking for. Only if we need to transfer. And looking money. for guy. <laughs> transfer. And money. looking for guidance. Sure but it's strong chief. Correct. Well, the only transfer will be at the end if needed. Basically. Right. Okay. Right. Well, I think it's got to make you feel. I I would hope a little bit better, Bob, that you've got. The support we're 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 all here we're all hearing it and um i've i've never thought that i didn't have the support i i understand that but the support for the position you know to be able to do this it will take a load off of me as the chief no matter what knowing that i have somebody there right i can't tell you the, the times when i have the full crew there or even one individual how easy it is now for me to be like, I can actually sit at home and watch TV for right. an hour instead well, and that's, that's, of waiting for this thing to go You know, off. right. That's been <laughs> part Family of life's the concern, an important part that of, it's just not yeah. reasonable the amount that's been expected of you completely outside 
of work hours to man this. Um, right. And it hasn't even necessarily been our expectation of you because we don't expect people to work 24 seven, right? It's, it's, it's been your own type. Oh, that's what I mean. Sure it, it's we, been yours. You know, we respond to the residents. So we appreciate and provide it. the service and, you know, in a way, I guess, back in my mind, it's, you know, it's, it's a way for me to also then long term is to justify, hey, this is why we need it. Because look at what right. the service we can provide. We just okay. need a couple of little tweaks to get to that, to okay. that next step. But, you know, I, I told you guys in October, I've told everybody, I really do like my job. I like the town. I, you know, I know residents now by name. I know what their medications are. So I walk in, they're like, oh, hey, <laughs> any changes since last time? No, nope, same things. So it, it makes the whole experience a lot better, I feel. For everybody. Um, for a lot of the residents in town that Absolutely. Hey, we know you and things, yep. are, things are good. So. I, yeah. I've never thought that I don't have the support. This is, and I know that this is a huge new undertaking going forward. It, it, for it is, services. it is. And, and I do still well, think, I do still think I want to get the proposals yeah. from the other places because if we're going to ask townspeople, townspeople to pay for things, we need yeah. to let them know we explored all the yeah. options. Uh, well, well, yeah, not only that, but it can't be a mystery because if there's right. something out there that's a mystery, then it's going to be. 50% cheaper, you know, it, you'll be able to make right. up whatever fact you want around it. Right. Yeah, but we want to know what the actual, right. Facts. Here's and, what the numbers. And here's I shouldn't have to say the sad. word actual facts because there <laughs> should only be one set, but right. <laughs> I mean, the beauty is the ambulance has always been self-supporting. This, this yeah. will be the first time in 41 years that ultimately coming forward is that we may be asking town residents to fund it. We, the ambulance has been fully self-supporting since it started under the Lions club and then moved under the yeah. town. I actually went back and looked at all the records and there's, there's actually been no tax money. It's, there's been some free cash. There's some donations, yeah. but everything else has been revenue. There's no actual taxes being used. So, well, and I think the other important thing, Bob, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it's like getting four people, yeah, right? Last one. Yeah. No, last one. Nope. Donations and surplus. I found the records from 2004. So Bob, it, it, no, the other thing that I think we need to make sure people understand is it's like getting four people because they're they're a paramedic or an EMT and firefighter, right? So right. No, I think no. that's important yes. too when when we have these conversations <laughs> moving forward. I mean, the fire the fire response has always been, you know, no more. The fire response is down. And we just don't have the people, and people are busy, and I. Again, yeah, there's, there's and that, I, I also want to speak to that because there's just been sort of a shift, right? We've had people over the years, and you're on the list, and Carrie's on the list that we've relied on heavily. Some that are no longer here, either literally no longer here, or just for whatever reason moved out of town or aren't doing it. We've always had this like core group of people we could. Re rely on mm -hmm. to leave their hot dinner to leave you know crawl out of a warm bed in the middle of the night and there is a shift and a change in that and we have to be willing to shift and change with it if we want to expect the same services because it's not realistic for you guys to do it all the time it's very good. we manage yeah but that's a lot yeah, and I didn't realize you guys were covering sometime, so appreciate that. Okay. Thank you very so much. So we don't need yeah. to vote. We'll just... Okay. Go ahead and do your thing. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Fire. We should do it separately. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, my goodness. It is a late night. Thanks, so now we... Um, so finance committee, are you guys all set? Do we need to return? So. Or well, we, well, we yeah. weren't really even in. Yeah, yeah we're okay. We're good. Yeah, we're going to. Well, we are. We've got to cut a couple minutes outside. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good night. I mean, so we'll see you in January, but, you know. It'll be here before you know it. And oh, well, so one thing we should talk about December. is December. money for, the for a consultant. Yeah. Mm. So I would assume there'd be money in the finance reserves. Do you know how much we have in finance in reserves? Finance no, reserve no, that's the top of my head. Okay. Have we haven't, we, we haven't, haven't spent, spent any yet. I was right. going to say, I, I, think, I thought it was anything. 
Well, we can do the leg. Days, Marlene can do the leg work days. on the consultant, and we can yeah. see what the costs will be. Yeah, I think it's about. I mean, we have at least yeah. find out. Six. I mean, and and it's great. I'm I'm glad we're looking at this, but we're going to have other departments. Yeah. You know, if there's going to be an override, other departments are looking for money too. So. Well, it's so not like you, we're just doing one. It's no, no, no. I know, and that's going to be, be all, you know, a menu. And I, there's there's really just a ton of work to do. Yeah. over the next few months, a ton of work to do. So mm. I think having a consultant look at this really with sort of objective, you know, outside eyes and all of those ramifications, like, a, you know, the things I mentioned about facilities and all of that sort of stuff, it all has to play in to the discussion. And so I think that's a really, really worthwhile exercise. But we're also going to need the information from the other two services for that. Mm -hmm. So we're expecting that in what January, the presentation. But oh, I mean, it's oh. going to take that long to get yeah. a consultant on board. So mm -hmm. it, could we sort of make an agreement to do that? And then based on what Marlene learns about the cost of it, I think that's notify reasonable. you guys about, Definitely. or do you need to vote it? Could it be voted like up to a right. certain amount or something like that? Idea about do Not until you have to make the transfer. Do we really have an idea about what that? She said cost? about six thousand. Is 6, that what you 000? said? No, Diane had asked about what's in reserve. Oh, about okay. sixty thousand. Oh, how do yeah, you do you know what a consultant? No, might I cost? don't. We'll have to look. You're at talking. That. I mean, yeah, it just, all depends yeah. on. Who, you know. We have to put a scope of work. There must together. be like municipal yeah, consultants. Yeah. There are. There are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be expensive. Yeah. Right. Okay. So Marlene can gather some information. Yes, on I'll do that. Okay. Right. It all depends a lot on the scope of work, too. Like, what are you actually Well, that's what I was just them, saying. Right? We need to... Are you, yeah. you going to ask them to review the numbers and, and look at it, or are you going to ask them to gather the numbers and then review? You know? Well, I think we can gather the information ourselves. And so my feeling is look at what Bob recommends for this for staffing level for doing it in town, what that would cost, you can give them projections about numbers and all of that. And then we'll have a proposal from Northampton and we'll have a proposal from South County and review them. But I also want to know, like, what does that mean for facilities? What does that mean for training? What does that do to Bob's salary? All of those things have to be considered. There's a lot of considerations there. So yeah, well, and you're gonna need somebody. Do you need somebody who has, like, are you looking for an accountant or are you looking for? No, I think there's the municipal. Safety? I think there's got to be consultants who are like municipal consultants public who safety understand type thing. all right, of I'm, this. Yeah, because you know, I mean, you're going to want to include what, <laughs> what is the, what is the response time? Yeah, what like? what's covered, what's, what's not covered, what's, what's the change everything, of service. Service. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we can look at certain numbers. I mean, any of us could do that, right? Yeah. But it, it's beyond just looking at numbers. It's to what Diana's saying. Well, if we go 16 hours, what do we need to do? If we go 24 hours, what do we need to do? And, right. And it's it's so we know what we're we're playing playing with. And um, you also have to look at the option if there is if an override doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. then it's like, well, now what? And you have to have that as a, mm -hmm. that's yeah. your final option. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Bob, go ahead. So <coughs> quick before I forget. So to Diane's point, that would be a thing, too, is that if, you, if an override doesn't pass, you're kind of back to what we were in prior to 2022 to yep. begin with. Right. Right. Yeah. Full call. Nobody else is coming unless it's a strictly mutual aid there's no agreement because there isn't enough money to even pay a third party without having an override. So no matter what, whether it's Hatfield, Northampton or, or South County, excuse me, no matter which one of those ends up going forward, all of them are going to require an override no matter what. It's just where is the money going? Is it staying in town, going out of town? Because currently there isn't money in the budget to pay those other services without an override. So that's, that is a good piece of that of, how where do we want to spend our money keep it in town or send it out of town with no new money coming in because there's no more ambulance receipts if you go to a third party that's so all have, and that's what i mean yeah. that's what that's, we right. need a real yeah so my second piece that i have my hand raised 
I, only my recommendation is that there are public safety consultants out there. Accountants are great at looking at numbers, oh, yeah. no, I'm not but just of because of the, yeah. what this is, fire and ambulance, somebody has to understand the numbers, but also the bigger piece of how we function internally fire right. yes. and ambulance and stuff I, like there's that. There's got to so be people who a, specialize in municipal consulting that have a, a, yeah. a, uh, an area of expertise or yes. whatever in public safety. Public safety yeah. Because again, it gets back to, you need to know the regulations of what you need in a facility if you have, you know, different ships right. and whatever. Yeah, so there has <laughs> to be, no, I, I don't, it's yeah. not an accountant. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need an accountant. Just as I know Marlene's going to look, just I, I, my recommendation would get somebody that has some background and understands numbers mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah, the, uh, the, the, side the, of the emergency you know, actual the, operations. Yeah. Yep. So. Yeah, because I would agree. Wholeheartedly. Okay. So we are heading into an executive session with, hey, with the chief. Thanks, guys. Good to see you. Yes. We'll be spending a lot of quality time together. How are the kids? Good. Yeah. Good. Good. What um what nights are going to be good? Because we're not going to see you to our first meeting together, right? Or is it still going to be Tuesdays? Is it still going to be not before you... six thirty or seven? Or... Well, that gives us time to do our business. I, I no, I'm just, I'm just I while we have the five of them here, I'm just throwing I am it out. Definitely not before six thirty, guy. Okay. And for our, me personally, I can't. Tuesday speak still seem to be. Else, but... Not that we can predict the future. That really works out good because yeah. we can take care of our normal select board business, and uh, then Tuesdays are good for you. You normally, I mean, I know stuff happens. So. Good. Okay. I just, you know, as Marlene's putting the schedule together. Five thirty is a little, you know, been a little bit tougher for me in the new job, but I've been making it work. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Happy yeah, New Year. Happy holidays <laughs> to you. I know it's Christmas. All right. Can we, we do this in here? Oh, we need to adjourn, right? Are we still on? Oh, I was thinking we already adjourned. Are we going into we executive already, session? We are going into, so yes, going. the next, the last item of business on this very long meeting, because we started at five o'clock, um, is to enter into an executive session and we will not be returning. I'll make a motion to go into executive session under Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Number 2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. I second that. Jaworski, aye. We already aye. Zinal, aye. And you said not go back into session, I, or I did. You did. Okay. Are we going into your office, Marlene? Yes. Okay. Thanks, yeah, John. Thank you, Karen. Sense,